Hello. 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 Daniel Lame, maybe. Daniel Lame? <laughs> well, I'm lamer than I am a liar, so mm. I would better go with Daniel Lame. I'm not going to touch that comment. The Daniel Liar. How are you, Danielita Perfection? Daniel Lame? I'm doing good. How yeah. are you? Good, good, thank you. How's been the morning? Uh, good. Morning has been good. Um, packed a bunch of stuff. A lot of packing. Yes, had a lot of packing. Yeah. Yeah, and you did a lot of shipping. Today, yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. No, I mean, don't worry. You know I like it. Yes. Today well, I wasn't able to walk there because I thought that it was going to rain. Oh, it's going to rain it's in gonna like, rain like in half an, an hour. Second. No, I think it's already raining. Yeah? Maybe. But I enjoy, I think I've said this before, but I really enjoy the walk there uh, when I'm listening to a podcast. Oh, yeah. It's a so good I walk. Just, it is. It is it's a good, about a 20-minute yeah. walk, I would say, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, you can good. make it in less. Oh, yeah. But I do like to take my time when I'm listening to a podcast. Of course. Going there. But, yeah. You know what I want to do? I want to go with Chile one day. Yeah. It is a long walk for Chile. I think it, yeah. Remember, for her, you know, one step of us is, is 120 going steps around the world for her. Yeah. So... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I think it would be... I mean, be I'm sure they can... I mean, I'm sure. But you can tell that she she gets tired, like, quickly. Yeah. Well, you she's know, tiny. It's just a little body. Yeah, it's And not... a puppy. So. Exactly, exactly. So she she just gets uh, exhausted very quickly, I feel. Yeah. Um, the no, only time... The o yes, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. The only time she does not get exhausted is when we are alive. Well, and she's running right now, around well, in the right now we were trying to stretch her post lunch nap. Yeah. That she gives us like a maybe an hour and a half I or think, more maybe. of a nap. Yeah. Um, but sometimes she just, um, you know, she she'll she just won't go down easily. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we we get her to sleep too quickly after lunch. Yeah, that's what I was telling you. Yeah. And I told you like, oh, I'm super proud. I think she's in her bed. And I looked at you and you had her yeah. in your arms. Yeah, So well, painting, you were cuddling so. her and I was like, okay, never mind. Yeah, I can paint now. I know that I can paint now with her. Yeah. Like. Oh, and she hand. loves it. Yeah. She, I think, I mean, I love that to see that she's so like poppy still. Yeah. That she can be super tired, but she... Like, tries to stretch that being tired to see if maybe you and I hold her. Yeah. Or put her in her little bed. Yeah. Because, I mean, when I was uh, cutting some veggies for lunch. Yeah. She was sitting down, looking at me, but almost falling asleep sitting. Oh, yeah. She's she's waiting for the, the pickup. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So. Um... Yeah. I wanted to for today, Daniel Lyra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I wanted to paint Love is Corinth. Do, is he familiar to you? No, Love is really. No, no, not really. He's this uh, German um, expressionist painter. Mm -hmm. I mean, he ended up being like a very expressionist painter. Uh, and, and this is like part of the reason that I'm interested in kind of making a reflection you know, through um, this this uh, very exaggerated portrait that we're going to do today. Mm. Uh, but um, the, where he started his career is very different from where he ended. Okay. It is, uh, um, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a such a um, dramatic sort of evolution as uh, Helen Scherfbeck's. Mm-hmm. But there is clearly this, you know, looser painting, more expressive painting, um, kind of a more economical painting. 
uh, bolder brushstroke painting. Yeah. Um, that is his more mature work. Mm, the cool thing about uh, Love is Corinth is that, well, he, he wouldn't be the only one for sure, but um, I would say um, Spencer is, is also um, responsible for this. But there would be no Freud, no Lucian Freud, if it wasn't for, um, for Love is Corinth, mm -hmm. for sure, like 100% for sure. There's a ton of the a ton of his paintings have so much of Freud in yeah. him. A ton of like nudes, early nudes, um, the female and male interaction. Also, it's it's kind of it's very Freudish in a strange way. Um, there's a self portrait of him, um, Daniel Ura. Let me get. To yeah, with um, he's backlit, and there's a skull. There's like a skeleton this uh, in his studio. Yeah. That is so fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's such a Let remarkable me, painting. I'm going to put it on. Yeah. And you can then put the one. On, this one? Yeah. That's him. Look at that. Yeah. I mean, how can that not be Lucian Freud yeah. about. Do you know what date that is? Let could you, me could you figure what date that, that self-portrait is without the shirt? Yes. Um, it says 1907. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Like, oh, wait. 80 years before Freud. Yeah, crazy. And it's so Freudish. Yeah. So, so Freudish. But could you, can you see how, what he ended painting? Can you see the difference? Like The late work? Yeah, I was looking for that. Very brushy, very black, like tons of black. So, you know, very Max so Bexman-ish. this one? Yeah, a lot of stuff, like very formless mm -hmm. also. Yeah. Um, Just pure. This one. This one's 1923, I'm sorry. Okay, but maybe maybe he went, uh, what time did he, what, what year did he die? Mm, let's see. Because I'm not super familiar with like his, oh. um, you know, the years where he, when he was working. I actually thought that self-portrait was, was later, to so be honest. So he died in 1925, and this one was 1923. Oh, wow. wow. So, yeah, so two maybe. years before. It's also... I mean, and this is kind of unavoidable, but we we don't think about this too much with um with realist painters with, or with um let's say painters that were trained somewhat traditionally in in you know that they have some sort of classical trainer or academic training that for example you know in the, in the um, second decade well nearing the second decade of the twentieth century um that's World War One and we tend to you know, not think that people had to live through those things. Yeah. Um, because, and this is like a very weird thing, but classical art has a way of just like, you know, remaining constant, mm -hmm. almost like, and I think to a degree, that's probably one of its faults, but it remains undisturbed. Yeah. You know, if you look at a Bouguereau, you would never see a world in pain when you look at Bouguereau. Mm -hmm. Like you could never never ever glean anything from the planet from what's going on socially politically yeah. nothing nothing you could say no it's reactionary he was looking at, at you know at beauty at a time of like post revolution france but no but no you know that it's it's almost like a an image that can survive or that can live like without context a, a temporal i don't know how to yeah i think temporal but i don't know how to um I don't know if that's, yeah, maybe that's, I, I don't think, I don't know if I use it, but maybe it is. No, like that. Timeless. 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 Yeah. Okay. But atemporal would be mm -hmm. the sort of word that you would see a curator, an art curator or a critic um, write down. Yeah. Because it just, you know, you can, you can make people understand what you're trying to say, but yeah. in a, in a, um, in a fancy way that was t completely unnecessary. Um, so, yeah, so we, we don't really think about it. And Germany has like these uh, post-war artists for sure. Oh, but I'm sorry, that were a temporal yes. exists. Oh, there we go. So I was yeah. just being bougie. Oh, there we go. I was testing you, so, so go ahead. Unnecessarily elegant. Mm -hmm. um, no, so, so I, I'm, I'm guessing that you just, as a human being, you can't be the same person. Even if like there's a tendency like if your art it shows a tendency or it shows um ideals that it strives for that were set 
you know, sometimes hundreds of years before you, sometimes thousands of years before you. Um, even if that's true, I mean, maybe you believe that you're just championing this beautiful kind of aspect of art and, and trying to push it beyond um, what is happening in the world. Like you're trying to believe that, that you know, the, the ugly part of humanity, um, the ugly side of human beings that is what can change, you know, at a moment's notice. But what is beautiful about humanity is what remains, what is kind of like, you know, etched in stone. And and those things can be, you know, painting or sculpture. And you can consciously decide to keep them sort of alive and undisturbed. But I don't know. I don't know. I think it's strange. I think it's very strange. I don't know how collectively we could keep something alive, you know, and, and, and believe that it shouldn't change when, I don't know, like individually in, in each of our lives, like if we suffer loss, we're usually not the same. Some people say like that you are a person up to the point where you're conscious that somebody you love passes away that that kind of changes how you understand life. Yeah. I totally agree on that. Um, that certainly happened with me with my aunt and then with my dad. Um, and I think it's, it is it is almost like a breaking point because you, you begin to understand, you begin to experience. You always knew that people are not eternal, but that point in particular shows you that, you know, somebody that you loved is gone. Yeah, forever. you just... It's not that you only know about it, but you know by experience. Yeah, you lived it. You lived through it. Yeah. And that changes you. So imagine that times, you know, a million or times like a degree that I would never be able, I'll never be able to rationally comprehend, which is what people went through in world wars. Yeah. You could argue that we still, we still quietly go through world wars, like individual wars. Colombia has been a, a warring country for decades and decades. So, but, you know, it's, it's kind of strange to think that it just remains constant. This thing remains constant. So maybe, you know, I, I have to read more about Corinth. I have a book on him. Oh, really? I, yeah, 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 I do, because he's, he's always been fascinating to me. But I, I wonder how much of, of post-war... Um, I mean, he did change his subject matter to be... He, he's not Beckman in that way. Um, his subject matter was is just... I don't know. It's just very direct painting. Like, you could just paint, like, a, a vase with flowers or, like, a landscape. But it was so... It, they feel so violent. Like, yeah. almost like Auerbach-y, so, you know, to a, to a degree. So me... I'm sorry. Yeah, go Because I just have the image... Of the painting you told me about the self-portrait, right, which right. is early work. Yeah. And I want to show one of the um, late work. Yeah. And then perhaps the uh, the one without the shirt that I think is yeah, like yeah, super yeah. powerful. Mm, let's see, because that's not something I can download. So you could screen capture it. That's fine. Whoa, that, that was Kind of nuts. That one's ugly, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you better show. You should show that one. The or, ugly one. Or that. Yeah. Or I this like, one. Yeah, because the ugly ones, I feel, or that one. That one's kind of nice. I mean, they're well, kind like of nice, one, but I don't. I think this one's so, so. So so make a screenshot. No no no. Oh yeah. Um. So I um. I don't know. I've always been fascinated by, it, but I I would love to know how much of um an influence, like um. Um, war had on this transitioning towards this this way way more expressive way of um, manner of painting so um, I'm going to read up on him a little bit more because I've always felt like he's a, a strange ego I don't know why you kind of pick up on that when you look at his paintings but um, aside from that I just don't I don't have much context for him but I find him fascinating so this is probably, I'm not going to um, fake knowledge that I don't have on him. I have visual knowledge of, of his work, but I don't have a ton of contextual knowledge of, of his work. In fact, 
I even thought it was a little bit later. I even thought that his latter work could have been like from the 1940s, you know, or, or nearing 1950. Yeah, so that's that's so how on the screen. I'm sorry. Yeah, in the upper, like the image on the top. Yeah, it's the late work, and down you can see yeah. the early work. Has so. that natural, um, sort of progression to looser painting, that that a lot of um, traditional painters have. So, um, yeah, but I'm not going to fake stuff like that, but I still find him a, a, a fascinating character, even when looked through the lens of somebody who just sees the, 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 the sort of visual degrading, if you will, of his work. Um, but what I was thinking about, and this is probably the reason why I was um, hoping to think about him while painting today, is that, you know, I know that my work is heading towards somewhere that feels also looser, also uh, more expressive. Um, the reasons perhaps for me going to, to the, you know, wanting to explore those places are probably vastly different from, from his and, and, you know, historically and contextually very much apart. But, um, but you know, I don't quite, you, you know, trying to like, say it simply i don't quite like where he ended up mm -hmm. i really i don't mm -hmm. i don't think it was it was a super strong painting um yeah so i'm sorry in screen it's the one that yeah. we were referencing oh, yeah. about. so good yeah. yeah so so good i mean it's just so much kind of like maleness to it i don't know if that makes sense but when i see it it's almost like beastly like caveman ish it's just like um you know um, 200 pounds of flesh feels like that portrait. It's very powerful. It's super, super powerful. It's like flesh with an attitude. Um, yeah, but my, my, I guess I'm trying to be conscious that, you know, when you, when you decide to go, it may be like a, like a runaway cart that it just ends up somewhere, you know? And, I don't know. Maybe it just makes me kind of wary, wary of of where I will end up. But it's something that I have no idea. You know, I have no clue where I'm going to end up painting. Like what my paintings are going to look like in twenty years or thirty years. So, um, so it's like an irrational sort of question slash fear. But um. Yeah, but I don't know. I was thinking about that. I was like, oh, wow. You kind of run this risk, right? If you, like, let go. Sometimes you, like, really let go. And if you let loose, sometimes it's like, woof, that's loose. And it's, like, a little too loose. So, I don't know. I yeah, don't know. so I let me show the, the, um, the other one. Yeah, look at that. Eesh. That's a lot. That is a lot, I feel. It's a lot going on. Yeah, and also, I mean... A lot of color. I mean, Oof. seeing the top and bottom... Because I don't... I mean, it's not the saturated colors that bug me. But it's yeah. just that I don't... The flicking. It's very yeah, flicky. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. I, I don't see what he saw. Yeah, or, in or it. you know, or maybe he was just like... I don't know, like... Pushing is so strange. Like, the, the notion of pushing... And for each of us would mean so many vastly different things. Like it, it's, um, you know, like an eternity of differences because the, the way we define it is as particular as every human being that has decided to paint. So, you know, and, and so who knows what he was going for? I, yeah. I, I really don't. I, I know I, I, I can understand, you know, the time that he was painting now a little bit more. I still think he's very courageous for, for this being done in the second decade of the 20th century. He's going for it. Like, this is, you know, this, again, this could have been painting two decades later and it would make sense mm. as expressionist painting. So, yeah, it's remarkable. What a painter. Such a strange sort of insular painter. Um, fantastic. Really, really fantastic. Yes. So, um, 
I'm going to paint. So part of the exercise is just reflecting a little bit on that. And the other part is um, working from that photo that I think is super powerful. Hmm. I think that's a really powerful photo uh, of him. This is, this is older him too, which is really nice because uh, their younger him just feels again like this mastodon of a painter. And, um, and this, this is where he starts to feel a little more fragile. Mm, I often speak about how I thought that way about my father. My father used to be the person that, um, you know, if you needed to crack open anything, like he had these, you know, super thick fingers and super strong hands. I mean, ridiculously strong hands. And he could just like take nails out of like wood with his fingers and, I don't know, he would just bang stuff with his bare fist. Uh, um, it, I, w I was always impressed of how strong he was. And I remember, and I think I remember one time that uh, my mother, my mother had her etching press um, at home and she wanted to give it to the university where I worked. So she, she donated her etching press. Um, it was like a, large format etching press that she was very proud of that my father had gotten for, for her like probably 15 years before and, or maybe a little bit more. And, and this is like, if you've ever seen a, a printing press an etching press, um, it's very heavy because the roller is very, very heavy. And the plate that's in the middle, this was like pure iron. This was all iron, all iron cast. So this was, you know, as heavy as a car, I would think. And, you know, we were trying to take it apart, but you can't take those presses apart. They're way too complicated. So it eventually had to be, I think we were like, maybe something like eight or nine people trying to lift this thing up and trying to take it out to a truck that was outside. And I remember um, the etching teacher from, from the uh, university I was in, he was helping out and he had brought like a ton of people to help out. Um, and I told them, oh, let me get my father. Because, you know, in my mind, I was like, my father could lift this thing by himself. Like he's, he's so ridiculously strong. And I remember that day just noticing that my father was struggling with stuff that I could lift at that moment. I was like, oh, you know, this is the weird moment that I'm stronger than my father. This is the very strange moment that I'm stronger. Mm -hmm. And it just felt so eerie. It just felt so like not right. You know, I could never understand how in the world I would be stronger than him. Like it, there, there was no, like my build was different. He was taller. He was like wider. Like I have a wide back, uh, but my father was like super wide chested, um, he, like big hands. Um, it's so strange to then see, oh, wow, he's struggling. It's just, it was just very strange. And so when I look at his, like, Love is Corn's paintings, it reminds me of that kind of, you know, maleness that, like, this strong father sometimes exudes. Um, and then when I look at this picture, I'm reminded of then looking at my dad and saying, oh, wow, you, you can get old. Like we get old, that is just life and we get weaker and that's just it. Um, it, it was, it was really, really like incredible. So I see some of that in the uh, portrait and I think it's fascinating and I would love to go for that because I can't connect, I obviously can't connect with Corinth other than at this moment, other than, than me being appreciative of his paintings and of that you know, really weird transitioning towards, you know, what he chose to be his, his latter work that I still find fascinating. It doesn't talk to me as much as, um, as his earlier work, but I still, you know, I still find it incredible. Um, so I can connect with him in a, I, I would guess superficial way, but when I see this very human aspect of him just kind of, um, peering through, through this photograph, that's when I can say, oh, I, I saw that in my dad. I saw something of that look in my dad, of somebody who, 
like used to be strong. Um, it's pretty fascinating. So I think I'm going to hold on to that because mm -hmm. that sounds strange, but I think that sounds pretty cool. I'm going to hold on to that and see and see what we can paint. Yes. So uh, people were asking about the name of the yeah. artist. Lovis Corinth. Yeah. So I just Thank you, uh, put the name oh, on the image. So yeah. You can see it. And also if you go to the description of the video, you can see the name. Thank you, Daniel Lyra. No, Daniel Lyra again. Daniel Lyra, Daniel okay, Lyra. It's like, like Elvira, that. but Daniel Lyra. Elvira. You don't know who Elvira is? No. Ta uh, uh, type Elvira, and maybe if you see her, you're like, okay, I think I've seen her, but I didn't know that. Como Elvira? Uh, I don't know if it has a Y, you know. Mistress of the Dark. There we go. Never. Seen. Never. No. 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 Yeah. Super disappointed? No, no, no. No, I I, I would have been um, impressed or, or interested in, in understanding where you knew her or where you'd seen no. her. No, no, no. Yeah. I was just uh, asking because it sounds um, very different from the Spanish pronunciation. Oh, right, right. So Elvira, yeah. Elvira and Elvira, yeah. Elvira, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we should say hi. We should. Liad was saying hello. Liad. Hey, Liad, how are you? Uh, I want to know, Liad, in one, in what number of coffee are you right now? I am craving my second matcha of the day. Yeah, but Liad, you never know. He may have just woken up. Maybe. So it may be one of those things that it's, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm barely. Crap, cracking open a nine. Yeah, I'm barely awake, but I've had seven. Yeah. Coffees. Ah, <laughs> uh, Fernanda Uribe. What? Está diciendo un, con una manito hola y está mandando una carita riéndose. Pero Fer está en colegio. Fer al colegio. Ah, Fer. Sí. Yeah. Okay, so Fer is like saying hi, but she's in school. So this is Fer. <laughs> Uso responsable del celular, por favor, Fernanda. <laughs> Uso responsable del celular, nulo. Sí. Ninguno. Y después, ¿qué? ¿Por qué no tiene internet? <laughs> Viendo YouTube. Ay, sí, Fer. Fer, ¿qué haces? Olga María Benninghoff dice... Pero acuérdate de dar like, Fer. Gracias, hasta luego. No, yo creo que ya se fue. <laughs> o si no se ha ido, se va a hacer la que ya se fue sí, para sí. que no la rega. Olga María Benninghoff dice, yeah. buenas tardes. Olguita. Hola, Olguita. ¿Cómo Mamita estás? Olguita. ¿Qué tal la lluvia por allá, Olguita? ¿Por acá? Sí, por aquí, sí, aquí ya empezó a llover. Si por allá llueve, por acá no escampa. Mm. Dilo mm. en inglés, linda. If over there it rains, over here it doesn't stop. Doesn't scampate. Doesn't... Mm. Escapate. No, escapate. Escampate. Norberto Pérez was sending a dinosaur. Hey, okay. Norberto. I think we all know that Norberto loves dinosaurs. I love that that's the way of Norberto of saying Either hi. that or something that we don't understand. Maybe they're like, no, 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 my, my, uh, key, ¿cómo se llama? Teclado? Keyboard? Keyboard, I was going to say keypad. Okay. <laughs> my keyboard is not working, so. Is this, is I this like how you refer to spheres of colors to the, uh, the Christmas ball or ornaments? Yeah. Yeah. The o o ornaments, yeah. If you're going to laugh about me, I'm going to laugh about you. Shakiro. Arelis Lemus was sending a hello hand. Which, by the way, are those emojis things like YouTube emojis? Because I've never seen those. And from like a couple of days ago, I've seen them here in the chat. So I don't, I don't know if they're like new, like a new YouTube feature, like their own emojis. I'm curious. Margo Delgado dice, buenas. Hola, Margo, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo está, Margo? Un hola, Margo. Un hola, Margo. Eh, Eliezer. Eliezer. <ríe> Eleazar, perdón. M dice, buenas tardes. Hola, Eleazar, ¿qué tal? Eh, ¿Cuánta Cody? gente le dice Eliezer, Eleazar? 
Cody Winicky who's saying hello. Cody. Love talking black. Love taking. I'm sorry. Okay. Black and white to color. Oh yes, always. Cacaito Pelon dice hello como one. Hola mi cacaero. Pelon. Es grato. Cacao. <laughs> eh, Marcelo Peralta is saying hi Chili, Danny and Nico. Hi Chili Jack. is chilling. Hey Marcelo, yeah. And I mean she's. Don't turn. No, 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 no. Turn. No, yeah. Because then she's gonna start wanting to be. And I'm like, don't turn, and that like, turn turns like, like your whole strong, neck. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I told you, let her walk, and then it was like I blinked, and you had her in your lap. She was. You were. She wanted to see what I was painting. Well, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It's For sure. Just, yeah. With yes. Her eyes closed. Well, it just takes her. I mean, it puts her to sleep, which it's either a really nice thing or she just finds me incredibly boring. <laughs> So, but I'll allow her to uh, to feel that way. Mm, Catherine Peremsky was saying, hi, everybody. Forgive me if you've already had this discussion a million times. No, please. But how come I don't get a sound notification? I checked all my settings and I don't know why I don't. So, Catherine, um, maybe you are subscribed, but you haven't ring the bell. It's like a little bell icon next to the subscribe button that uh is what you have to activate to get the notifications but maybe if you have activated the bell you if you have ring the bell and you are not receiving the sound notifications is because your app in your phone does not allow uh sound notifications so you would have to go to your uh settings and allow sound notifications on YouTube. Yeah. Peter Smikins was saying, woohoo, finally catching you live again. Nice. Finally, Peter, happy new year. Oh, stop it, Danny. <laughs> Until February. No, no, no. The 20... No, no, no. Five. I mean, you keep 24. saying it, but I'll keep saying that it's wrong. Well, so. I mean, that's not going to stop me. So. No, 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 I know, but I'll... <laughs> I'll I'll feel strongly enough about the wrongness of it mm. to say every single time that it's wrong. Perfect. For me, for me. Yeah, perfect. I respect your bad taste. Yeah. Well, I mean, you are with me. No. I am with you. So I know. It's, you're it, talking about bad taste. You are. I know. It, it, it could only have happened with somebody who had bad taste, <laughs> the willingness to be with me. So. No. The best taste. That sounds weird, but... Javier Ugarte dice, hello, everyone. Hola Javier, feliz año. No, mi amor, pero vamos. Carla Anglada. Ya lo estás haciendo, es, es para molestarme. Pues obvio. No, no, no. Qué desgracia, qué desgracia la mía. Tan infinita. Qué desgracia, Laisa. No tan infinita, la mía. Si vas a hacerlo, tienes que hacerlo bien. Carla Anglada is saying, hello Danny, Nicolás, sweet Chilean chat. I love this image already. Hey Carla, how are you? Marcial Marcial was saying, hey, you two, I missed the start. Who's the guy? So uh, it's Love is Corinth. And I just put the name in the image so you can uh, know who he is. Dystopia Project was saying, hello, guys. How oh, are you today? Oh, look at that. Two days hey, in Dystopia. a row. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, happy to see you here again. We're yes. good. We are good at uh, pouring rain. Pouring? Pouring. Pouring yeah. rain. Um, how about where you live at? Is it sunny? Snowy? Is it raining? Is it oh, you're gonna go dry, all of them? humid? Um, okay. Is it yeah, day or did. night? Oh, Jesus Christ. Let me know. And Happy New Year. Oh, my <laughs> God. Javier dice, Javier Ugarte dice, una pregunta. Sí, señor. ¿El liquid tiene vencimiento? Tengo uno que lleva dos años conmigo. Mm. Mm. A ver. Mm. No. Ven, yo quiero ver. Pero bueno, lo estaba viendo yo, pero bueno. Sí, señora. <risa> yeah. Gracias. Eh, ¿Dani va a confirmar lo que dije? No, no, mm. no parece. No pareciera. Yo supongo que todo tiene vencimiento, pero... 
pero un, un, una fecha de vencimiento aparente, no, 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 no creo. No creo. Tampoco sé suficiente. Javier es, discúlpame. Sí, Lilita. es Javier Ugarte. Javier, tampoco sé suficiente en términos como químicos de lo que le pasa a una resina alquídica si se oxida o si se degrada con, no sé, luz, no sé. Eh, no sé suficiente si le soy 100% sincero. Entonces, eh, pero que sea, mm, que tenga un vencimiento que, que tenga que ponerse en la en el empaque, que supongo que eso sería como por ley o por, sí, no sé. Eh, no, no, so no I parece. Just found, uh... In a liquid product yeah. Q&A on Amazon. Yeah. Someone was saying, I have an unopened liquid bottle lying since four years. Yeah. Is it still okay to use? What is the shelf life? Okay. And there's an answer. Okay, but you do know that this is... Uh, of any, course. It like, I like could answer people. dinosaurs. Yeah, it's like us answering to that. But yeah, so... Mm, so... Uh, Jonathan T. Vincent. Okay, you're, you're Say, throwing him under the bus. Great. Yeah. As long as the medium is still liquid gel, it's fine. Uh, it doesn't really expire unless it's exposed to air for a while. It's made to be archival, which means that although it dries and cures, it doesn't become unstable. Well. So, I don't know, Jonathan. I'd argue but, all, all, uh, some of yeah. those things. I don't know. I don't really know if we have the experience or the knowledge about um, how it behaves through time to categorize it as archival because it's very particular and we only it's only been in the like it's only been in the industry for like something like 35 years or something yeah. like that i, I think liquid why are we answering in english Oh. To Javier. Uh, for Spanish, everyone. I'm sorry. Qué pena. No, 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 no. I Javier. just realized. But, yeah. But no, but I think Javier understands English too. So. Ah, Javier, no. No le vi fecha de vencimiento. No creo que tenga. Y si y no la tiene. Jonathan en Amazon. <laughs> sí, según. <laughs> no se vence. Sí. Entonces. Eh, no, no, no. Yo creo que si tuviera una fecha de vencimiento. Tendría eh, que salir, sí. Tendría que, que estar en el empaque. Sí. Eh, y siento que... Mm, sí, aparte de oxidarse, que eso es lo que hace que se, que se vuelva un gel, que se como que se vaya convirtiendo en un gel y se solidifique. Eh, no, pues no sé. Yo he tenido liquids que duran mucho tiempo. Pues la verdad no sé si tanto tiempo guardados los haya tenido. Uy, yo pero... sí. ¿Sí? Sí. Sí, porque yo usé en la universidad. Sí. Y yo esa vez compré dos tarros de liquid. Y eh, solo utilicé uno, pero abrí los dos. Sí, bueno. Y no después, verdad. como a los dos años, sí. utilicé el otro en otra clase de pintura. Sí, dos años yo pensaría que no es... Entonces, no... No es inusual que un, un medio... O sea, lo que, lo que tiende a poder pasar es que se evapore, digamos, el solvente que hay adentro, cualquiera que sea, y, y que entonces los medios se vuelvan un poquitico más difíciles de trabajar porque tienden a ser más densos cuando se evapora el solvente. Pero de resto, no. Yo no, no me he topado con algo que uno diga, uy, esto ya huele a mico, esto está pasado. Eh, Peter Smikens was saying, Corinth studied under Bugaro. Corinth? Yeah, Corinth. Love is Corinth. Oh, it doesn't quite show. I mean, there's... Uf, Danny, if you could find it, there's a... A male nude that is almost like, I forget what it's called. I don't know if it's just like one of the, the what's it called? This like one? one of the thieves. No, no, no. Although that's a very classical nude. Oh, the, the, the one, the one that's profile with the knee bent. So second this row. One? No, the, the, the last one in the second row. This one. Oh, I love that. Oof, look at those legs. That is powerful. I mean, 
honestly, looking at that painting, it doesn't tell me French. It doesn't say French to me. But um, uh, but maybe it could be more Bonat, maybe, or Cochmon, maybe. But if you're saying that he studied under with Bouguereau, I'll I'll believe you. I I just I I can't I don't see it, but yeah, I believe you. If I'll trust you, I trust people. So let me uh, put that image. I love that. That male nude. Where is it? Ugh. It was a web whatever, so it's not a... Yeah, happens. ¿Cómo se dice? JPG. JPEG. JPEG. But it was a another thing, so um not gonna put it. <laughs> okay, that was sad. Because <laughs> I just closed. <laughs> Great effort, Danny. No, okay, Thank okay. you. Okay, okay. Let me let me Great do effort. it again. So go here. Um this one. This can't be downloaded securely. Oh, it doesn't matter. This card. No, but they it doesn't let me keep. So you could uh, screenshot it. No, I think I have it. Wait. Oh, okay. So here it is. There you go. That's the one. Thank you, Daniel Ira. You're welcome. It took a it took a while, but it took what it had to. What? It took what it had to. Okay. <laughs> um, Marcelo Peralta was sending a laughing face. I yeah. don't even know if I should call them emojis. Laughing, purple, uh, character. Okay. Veliko Duric was saying, hey guys, how are you doing today? Hey, Veliko. Veliko. We're great. How are you? You sick bastard. No, don't say that. I mean, to his face. No. To his face. Uh, Javier Ugarte was saying, estaba diciendo el de la foto, en blanco y negro también es, love is Corinth. Sí. Sí, sí, sí. Mm, a ver. A ver. Sergi Arts dice, hola. Ay, Sergi. no me acuerdo el nombre de este artista, pero me encanta su autorretrato debajo de la derecha. Debajo a la derecha. Sí, es brutal. Entonces, sí. Eh, Lu Andino dice, hola a todos. Pero dijo, ¿no se acuerda? No me acuerdo el nombre, es que era antes de que lo pusiera. Yo. Ah, gracias, listo. Es que estoy leyendo, acuérdate siempre. Sí, sí, que sí. los comentarios Super no los estoy leyendo en tiempo gracias. real. Porque sí, sí, pues, no, y estás rompiendo la No mente. existe. Las... Luandino dice, hola a todos. Blanco y negro a color, wow, me encanta. Seguramente va a quedar espectacular. No, mucha presión, gracias. Uh, Corey Krumnaker was saying, hello, hello, powerful stuff. Uh, hey, Corey, how are you? Sergi Arts was saying, totally feel you on this. It hit me super hard when I realized that my parents were aging, especially my dad. So weird and sad, but that's part of life. Yes. Mm, Marcelo Peralta was saying, going through this with my dad at this time, mm. my younger brother has been replacing him on the tough tasks at his farm. It mm. makes him very cranky. Oh, I'm sure that for somebody who understands themselves as strong, uh, I'm I'm sure that it's it the realization of of getting weaker and weaker is not cool. Um, Liad was saying, "Haha, just in my second espresso." Oof. I told you, 
And how long have you been awake, Liet? I want to know that too. Fifteen minutes. <laughs> uh, Inakuza was saying, hello, Danny and Nicolás. I'm watching the stream with my girlfriend here in Brazil. We're Brazil. sending love, beautiful drawing, success. Brazil. So hello to you, Inakuza, and to your girlfriend. Maybe going to, and I'll I'll say it just to make it, um, push myself to make it official, but I may be going to Sao Paulo Ooh. in uh, September. Setem I don't know how to say September in <laughs> What were you going to say? Setembre. Setem Setembre. Setembre. There it is. Setembre. Setembro. Setembro. But I don't know if that's the pronunciation. Setembro. 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 Sim. I don't know. Sao Paulo. And mi corazão. 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 Curazão. Uh, so, you should say this. I can't see. Okay, sh but... Okay. Vou para São Paulo em setembro. Ooh. That was that was so good. Marcelo, é... eu sou terrível. Per por quê? Por quê? Por, por quê, sim. <laughs> no, I was going to no. say this. With this. Eu sou péssimo com português. But not you, me. Ah. So I Daniela. was going to say it. Daniela. Daniel? No, I'm not Ch Daniel. I'm sorry. Ch <laughs> um, let's see. Mm. Joao Gabriel Joao. Tavares da Cruz. Gabriel. So, wow, Nicolas, you do this because, I mean, you were into your Portuguese. Uh, yo falo. Yo, yo falo. Yo falo. <laughs> <laughs> too, many too many languages. Uh, okay, let me see. É, você já olhou algum artista muito bom e pensou que nunca chegaria a um nível dele? You got it? Yeah. If, What? If you, if you have, if you've known of an artist that you've always admired the level where they're at. And, and that if you, you would think, think that you would get to that level? That, yeah. Um, no, but I still don't understand the question. Like, <laughs> If I if I have an artist in mind that or if I had an artist in mind so at wait, some point translate yes yes please no let's see so it is have you ever looked at a very good artist and thought you would never reach his level oh yeah oh yes a hundred thousand of no, them no but you should answer maybe in Spanish. Oh no, Portuguese, it, you know, it's probably, it's more probable that they understand English than No, because I know that last time uh, Joao was asking, Joao. I thought they were typing something in Spanish because it was a short question and we answered in Spanish and they got it. So that's why I was saying oh. that. Joao. Um, no, que si he conocido, que si he, <laughs> he, he sentido que hay un artista que tiene un nivel muchísimo superior al mío y que yo nunca voy a tener ese nivel, sí, constantemente. Todos los días, sí. Todos los días que veo el trabajo de gente talentosa, me doy cuenta de lo lejos que yo estoy de esas personas. Todos, todos los días. Sergi Arts dice, esta pintura es un ejemplo perfecto de cómo funciona mi, mi daltonismo. No sabría decirte si los colores de la cara son verdes o amarillos. Eh, son ah, un amarillo verdoso gris. Verderillo, sí. Sí, un verderillo. Eh, M.A. was saying, hi everyone. La foto de referencia es del fotógrafo Hugo Erfurth. Muchas Muchísimas gracias. Crédito gracias. al fotógrafo. Entonces, eh, lo voy a poner en la descripción del video. Entonces, uh, 
que so black and white photo portraying the German artist love is core photo are perfecto so thank you so much M A let's see um benching graph is saying do you think orange is the new black for <laughs> shadows in the skin what uh <laughs> aside from the play of words i don't know if i understand that a little i bit. think it's just a joke just a play of words maybe okay. Inakuza was saying, love when you use the Sorn palette. Oh, me too. I could die here. I, I mean, it would be boring for... It, although, I, I don't want to condition people. But it may feel boring to other people, but um, not to me. Or at least right now, I feel completely like fulfilled So with this palette. So... Catherine Peremsky was saying, I did ring the bell and allowed sound notification, so I'm not sure what's up, mm. but it's okay. I never go that long without looking at my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Although, I have to tell you. But maybe it's the settings you, on the phone. No, no, Catherine. Um, I mean, if it is all the time like that, then maybe it is something uh, more consistent going on. But I have to tell you that there's been many times that I don't receive a notification. Yeah, to be honest, YouTube is not that regular with the um, yeah notification and you never know if end. they're like changing stuff server wise or or uh um or i don't i don't i have no idea what the cr criteria they have is for um for notifications but yeah i don't know i i don't think it's as it's as consistent as it appears to be Sergi Arts dice, ahora estoy empezando a ver ese verde slash amarillo como naranjas y rojos. Lo mío es de chiste, jajaja. Ja, ja. No, está tripeando allá, Sergi. Catherine was saying, hi you all and little Chili. Hey Catherine. Hey Catherine. I hope that Chili gets to sleep a yeah, lot. Please Catherine, keep it down then. <laughs> Emily Hales was saying, Nicolás, have you ever tried to digital paint? It could be an interesting stream someday. Yes. So I'm sorry. I'm gonna go hit a little bit of water because I sure. want a matcha. So. Uh, sure, sure, sure. It's not going to take me matcha time. Oh no, you Let could have left. You. Matcha. Oh, you could have left. Like honestly, you could have left. Um. So yes, I've tried digital painting. I'm not good at it. Not not really good at it. I don't have like um enough knowledge of. I mean, I have knowledge of Photoshop in the sense that I can edit my files, my photo files, probably have more knowledge of Photoshop in terms of photo uh, of it as a photo editing tool than as a painting tool. And I don't know how to think in layers. That that was very apparent when I did, you know, my the work that I um, used to do in, in Photoshop. Um, it's really, really difficult for me to think in layers. Uh, if, it, if it was just to me, I would just paint everything in either a single layer or have like a sort of tone um, or like, you know, uh, a surface. Uh, and uh, like, let's say a uh, um, linen texture or something. Um, and I would paint directly on top of it and I'd be, I'd be super satisfied. But um, I could give it a shot. We, we have Wacom tablets, which are very obsolete nowadays. For, well, but uh, I do have an iPad. Pro that you oh, could use right, right, right. with uh, Procreate. Um, I don't know how we could. Um, I mean, I'm sure that that's easily. Well, we could do a video, like an edited video. I think it would be easier because oh, okay. you could like record screen. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Or I think you can uh, download the process yeah. of the painting. Which well, is Procreate very cool. has for screen recording, right? Yeah. Up until, I, I would guess up until one point. Um, yeah. But I don't know how to use. Danny knows how to use use procreate better than me i think Fed knows how to use procreate better than me mm -hmm. um but yeah i could try i could try mm, atanu was saying hello beautiful people oh you guys are so nice and helpful <laughs> can oh. you please draw a heart on your ballot 
and I'll show that to my boyfriend. Okay. On your palate. Any, any, is there a reason for no peas or whatever? Or what we're trying Maybe there? Maybe the key, the keyboard's broken. Uh, maybe. Heart on, on my palate, sure. I don't know if they can see there. Okay. Oh, no, no, they could. They there, can, they can. There yeah, we go. perfect. That's, that's for you. <laughs> and I'll also just write a P. As a reminder. As a reminder that we use P's. <laughs> that we like to pee. Irvin Torres Art, who's saying, Hello, guys. Nice to be listening to you guys while cleaning the house. By the way, I've been so busy. Hope you're doing good. Saludos desde México, como siempre. Ah, lo mismo. Hi, Irvin. Y, y haciendo... ¿qué, ¿Qué nos ocupa en este momento? La limpieza de la clase. No, casa. no, no. Pues, pero... ¿Qué task específico? Sí, o en estos días. El busy, ah. el busy yo lo entendí más como algo que está pasando, act no, no en este momento, sino como en esta, en Te estos días, terrible. en estos sí. días. Sí, 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 también entendí. No. Pero es que no. Sí, pero no sabía si tu pregunta iba a qué, qué estaba haciendo en este momento o eh, que no. por qué había estado ocupado estos días. Mm, Corey Krumnaker was saying, Carla, I went to the doctor and there isn't any fractures. Oh, that's great, yes. Corey. But I have to take time of art and the artist constipation is real. LMAO. Oh, I totally oh. trust you. But, but I mean, I'm happy that it's not a fracture. You have to take the good with the bad. So the good thing is that there's nothing wrong. Like wrong that would, you know, merit cast or surgery or anything like that. Yes. So that's a good thing. Um, Jeff Avila, who's saying, hey guys, Jeff, the liquid I am using is 25 years old. Oh my <laughs> and God. And some laughing emojis. Stop it. Are, <laughs> are you serious though, Jeff? No. Maybe. Jeff no. doesn't lie too much. You got like the first batch of liquid. Well, I was looking for that. I think it's something like 1986 or 1970s, according to this. Really? It says, All Kit Resin Medium for Artist was first invented in 1970s by Arthur de Costa. Yeah, but I want to know. Yeah, but the, the, the liquid, liquid, I think yeah. it's from the 80s. If I'm, I could be mistaken, but I, I think I've always kept that in my brain as something mm -hmm. like data. Liquid as in Winsor Newton's liquid. Because I think they made it more ubiquitous, I would say. So it says... Uh, I don't know. Great. Hmm... <laughs> Carla Anglada was saying, I'm doing good, painting, working on a frame, and enjoying another snowy day. That sounds good. Are you also having a hot drink? Like I'm going to be in... Oh, okay. I thought she had second. given you reason to believe that she had... No, she it's a snowy day. So I thought it oh, may... No. Yeah, that wasn't me, you know? I never, I never got the hot chocolate when it's like cold outside or anything But you like have that. hot tea all yeah. day, every day. I don't. What are you talking about? Jesus Christ. Let me get a sip of <laughs> Yeah, I mean. I mean, I think oh, you it's could. It's disgusting. It's getting colder. I think you could even go to the beach and drink hot tea. Well, me and, and people that live in deserts, we, we know what's up. Hmm. Well, but you couldn't survive. In the desert? Never. Or in the beach. So. Never. Yeah, not even. <laughs> In lukewarm weather, not really. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Luandino dice, está quedando con una vibra vampiresca. Jaja. <laughs> Estaba diciendo hace un rato. Muy bien. Uh, Dusaba King was saying, your painting is making me think of Daniel Day Lewis. Okay. The actor for some reason. LOL. Uh, in, uh, what's it called? Gangs of New York? I don't know. What was that movie called? Mm. Not Gangs of New York. Was it Gangs of New York? Was that, was that how it, what it was called?
Gangs of New York. Yeah, it's an excellent movie. You have a good memory. I know how you do it. Oh, because it's a hell of a movie. Well, very good movie. You remember everything. I'm sorry. Who are you? Yeah, not not things that have to do with me, but you remember. Yeah. Many other things. Like relevant stuff. Yes. <laughs> Jeff Avila was saying, yep, opened 25 years ago. Wow. Crazy man right yeah. there. Yeah, no, it's it, as, as long. I mean, people can use paint that is 80 years old if they wanted to. Um, paint doesn't really go bad. Uh, so, um, yeah. I mean, what's, what's interesting is just having something like that. But I, I have... I think the the oldest thing with me that I have is the uh, some of the colors that I bought in '95. Yeah. So do you have super old brushes? No, 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 no. Those are gone. Hmm. Joshua Wallace was saying, Nicolas, do you bother working with splayed brushes, or do you immediately replace them with new ones? Oh, love no. your work. I like splayed brushes. No, I I really do. I don't mind them. I like sharper ones. So. When I need to have like a combination of the two, um, but I, I I won't throw them away if if that's what you mean. Like, I I totally have use for them. Like these get splayed very quickly. The the cheap flats, very very quickly. So that would mean that I would have to get brushes about you know once every couple of weeks. And no, I don't do that. MA dice una pregunta. Sí. ¿Alguna vez probarán un multiverso donde Dani oh. sea la que pinte y Nico sea el que modere el chat? ¿Yo? Tendría que ser un 24 horas feliz de porque moderar, yo soy súper lenta. Yo feliz. Pero, eh... Cuando quieras, algún día. Daniel Ira. Algún día. Brendan Kendrick was saying, we're halfway through another week. Hope everyone is well. Hey, Brendan, hope you're well. Uh, too. <risa> Carlos Martínez Bel Belioche uh -huh. dice, hola Dani y Nico, espero que hayan tenido un buen inicio de año, quería Muy preguntarles amable, si su punto de vista acerca de cómo convive el dibujar slash pintar desde la imaginación fotos y observación eh, nosotros hemos tenido semanas donde Ah, bueno, pero fueron en vivo, ¿no es cierto, Linda? No no, no hicimos videos. ¿Cuál? Las que, do, que trabajamos de la imaginación no fueron videos editados, ¿no? No, eso es... no. Pero podemos invitar a... Um, no, no estoy sé. segura, pero bueno. Ah, bueno. No, yo creo que no, ¿sabes? Creo, creo que no... Déjame revisar. Creo que para ese entonces ya estábamos haciendo... Yo también creo, pero... Eh... Videos eh, eh, casi que exclusivamente en vivo. Eh... Yo tenía una capacidad, porque todo, todo es, digamos, entrenable, todo. Entonces, mi capacidad era mucho más alta cuando yo era joven, eh, y por joven seguramente me refiero, sí, cuando era más joven, casi que adolescente, y, pero también cuando salí de la universidad y estaba trabajando en un estudio de ilustración, eh, porque... Yo, yo hacía muchos storyboards y, y muchos eh, animatics y pues el tipo de trabajo eh, me obligaba a tener que resolver cosas de la imaginación. Teníamos referentes para muchísimas cosas porque nos tocaba mirar, o sea, como trabajamos para, para um, campañas, digamos, eh, eh, publicitarias de comerciales o que iban a salir en revistas o cosas así, pues normalmente nos pedían cosas muy particulares, entonces teníamos que mirar referentes para ese tipo de cosas, pero, pero teníamos que hacer la grandísima mayoría de los trabajos desde la, la imaginación y yo siento que yo era muy bueno en ese momento y siento que lo he perdido porque pues empecé a trabajar o del natural, porque yo fui muchos años profe de dibujo al natural, eh, de pintura al natural, eh, y porque yo empecé a trabajar también desde fotografías, desde referentes fotográficos. Entonces, yo creo que mucho de eso lo dejé de entrenar, y, y siento que es como cualquier cosa, cuando uno 
si uno se interesa por algo, pues tiene que empezar a, a dedicarle, digamos, un porcentaje de tiempo a, a ese aspecto. Si quisiera volver a esa capacidad que tenía, uy, yo creo que demor me demoraría un tiempito. O sea, me daría... Digamos que soy sensato y, y entiendo cuán lejos estoy de, de, de esa capacidad que tenía en ese momento. Entonces, no sería tampoco injusto conmigo mismo, pero sí, yo siento que me demoraría como por ahí un añito otra vez en recuperar algo de esa capacidad. Eh, pero todo es como unas por otras. O sea, o sea uno, uno no es que eh, ponga esa capacidad así como en... en a, a hibernar y no hace nada. No, 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 pues yo, digamos, eh, lo, que, lo que tiende a pasar es que uno la, la cambia por otros aspectos en los que quiere concentrarse. Y eso es, creo, lo que yo he hecho durante estos años. Es cambiarla como por aspectos de pintura que, que de pronto no necesariamente tienen que ser eh, eh, atados a... Um, si trabajo de, desde el natural o con un referente o, eh, o de la imaginación. Eh, sí, ahí estaba viendo y sí son eh, no sé live qué. streams. Ah, listo, perfecto. Sí. Pero entonces para una reflexión acerca de eso, lo invitamos a... ¿Me recuerdas el nombre? Eh, Juan Carlos. Martínez Belliosh. Invitamos a Juan Carlos. Juan, Martínez Belliosh. A que, a que cheque. Che, checa que esos cheque videos. Checa los videos. Checa sí. esos videos. Eh, a ver, voy a compartir uno de esos. Listo. Creo que con ese queda más fácil que encuentre los otros. Sí. Listo. Gracias, Lindita. No. Con gusto. Tan Mucho amable, gusto. tan bendita. Siempre. Bendita, no. Amable, a veces. Eh, Belico Tudich was saying, haha, thanks for following Instagram, Nicolás, and all the likes. Yeah, I saw, I finally saw your face. It's so, so wonderful when, when you finally see somebody. Yeah. Yeah, you look, mm -hmm. you look like how I imagined you. So okay. I think that's a good thing. You know, all those nights that I dreamt about you, that is the image that I had. Mm -hmm. So okay. I, I'm happy that... Uh, that's better for a uh, DM conversation, Nicolás. No. Oh, we had that one too. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Peter Smikens was saying, Corinth lived in Paris briefly, where he started with Bugaro. Uh-huh. He suffered a stroke, which made him work loser. Oh, in the okay. first years of World War One. Okay. Oh. There we go. Thank you for this. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to read up more on him too, but thank you for all these. Is like... the book you have on him like about oh, his life or yeah. is it about... It's it's like, a, you know, it's it's like, a, what do you call... Um... Oh, God, I, I, I forgot the word. Um, no, it's a good book. It's it, It's not, I mean, it's one of these art books that you know has has all his work and oh and right, right. You a but, yeah yeah yeah. no 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 i was asking because i i was wondering if it was like an autobiographical no no, no it's not a like bio. if it was a written no it's not a bio only it's book a, yeah, or no. with uh yeah no, no, no it's, a, it's a it's a monograph that's oh, the perfect oh god that's the word that i was uh trying to look like struggling to uh, find uh Liad was saying three hours. So Liad has been awake for three hours. That's good, I feel, in, in Liad's, you know, time. To press us in three hours. It's pretty good, I feel. Yeah. Par for course, I would say. I have to say, Liad, you um made me want to drink my second matcha. You antohated me, as Nicolas would say. Yeah. It's a word. Um, uh, Cody Winicky was saying, was there an illustration in your early years that took you by surprise? Mm. Meaning an image that changed how you thought about illustration as a whole? Oh, but that I did or that I saw somebody else do? I or? guess that someone did, maybe. Oh, wow. Um, 
one in particular if, if there was one in particular i'm trying to think uh because i'm a enormous fan of of like golden age illustrations so um you know my my ideas of illustration are kind of mixed in with so the wholeness of illustration for me it's really a mix of old school illustrators together with comic book artists and and um you know, graphic novel artists and stuff like that. So I don't know. It would be very, very hard to try to pin it to some, to like a particular thing that I saw. It would probably, if, if, it's, if it's about the impact that it had on me, it probably has to, I would probably have to say it, it was comic books or graphic novels for sure. You know, something like uh, Jeff Darrow and Frank Miller, uh, uh, doing hard boiled, uh, or uh, Masamune Shiro, uh, doing Ghost in the Shell or Apple Seed. Uh, what else? What else? I'm trying. I'm like squeezing my brain, uh, trying to think of uh, Dave McKean for sure. Arkham Asylum, um, for sure, for sure. Arkham Asylum. Um, George Pratt, Enemy Ace, amazing. Uh, Kent Williams, I remember young Kent Williams. Um, when he was doing comic books, um, let me think. Like visual, I mean, so many and and like so so many commercial comic book artists of that time. But I would say them. When I was very little, I've talked about how we had like a fantasy uh, book. It was probably my brother's um, that had. Uh, I, I it was it wasn't quite a Frazetta book only. It had it was like a compendium compendium of artists. I remember. But, you know, I, it was so funny how the images that I liked the most were the Frazetta ones, for sure. And, um, but that was my, I, I'm pretty sure that was my, my brother's book. But we had that book, like, in the, in the bookshelf with all the other, like, children's books and all, all that stuff. Which, so it was amazing. Um, yeah, early, early childhood, it, had to, it, it would have to be, so earliest childhood, it would have to be Frazetta. Um, for sure, for sure, because I don't think I knew more illustration. Like I didn't have notion of illustration aside from that. But you know, having Frazetta as your entry point to illustration was is a blessing. I feel uh, he's still quite magical, and I was super into like naturally into monsters, um, like into into fantasy. Not not super, you know. I I, I wasn't super super into high fantasy, but but. Um, just love, I love creatures. So fantasy kind of satisfied that. Um, and when I got older, like when I was, uh, probably starting school, so art school, it, it had to be the rediscovery of, um, all the golden age illustrators. So, and then, you know, the generation that came uh, after that, and even illustrators that came after that, you know, in the, uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, but, um, yeah, and so so it's full of like uh, Rockwell, Cornwell, uh, Howard Pyle, um, all the Wyatts. Uh, well, the illustrator and C, but you know, in essence, all the Wyatts. Um, uh, yeah, and then and then just you know the breadth of of all illustration. But I'm trying to think if there's a particular image that. Um, that just I can't get out of my brain in terms of of illustration. I think the one that I I talked about in the video that we did of the the bag with coins, um, that it's the N.C. Wyatt from Treasure Island, where he's just discovered the treasure and he just has a couple of coins in his hand and there's this like mound of of treasure like underneath him, and just the way he solved the treasure, I always felt it was like magic like how can a painter speak about you know thousands upon thousands of golden coins but not paint each of them individually because Wyeth was and see Wyeth was such a you know a bold painter that um you know he he always solved images simply always it could be the the more the m most complex image that you would ever see but Wyeth had the ability to solve it simply so I'm going to say that that Treasure Island image still still kind of haunts me in a good way up until today. I, I think it's a, it's, it has to be one of the 
you know, most amazing illustrations ever made, I feel. Um, that one is, I mean, his Treasure Island is full of just classic illustrations, but there's something about that one that just blows my mind in so many levels. Like, it blows my mind as a little kid thinking of treasure, of like pirates and treasure. And I remember think, uh, rem uh, I, I remember watching when I was younger, like an episode of The Little Rascals, that they are having this dream that they go to this island. I hope somebody here, like this rings a bell for somebody. But it's a Little Rascals episode where, where they are dreaming. I mean, in the end, you realize it's a dream. But um, they are, they're thinking that they are in a, uh, in a pirate's uh, sort of lair or cave or something. I don't know. That is full of treasure. And I, I, I remember I used to love that episode. And don't ask me where I saw it because it makes no sense to... I don't, I don't even know where I could have seen this thing when I was younger. Um, Maybe but, when you were traveling? No, we're ma no, because I remember watching it at home. So I don't know. Oh. I don't know. It's, it's pretty weird that I have this memory. Um, I even asked my brother one time that if he remembered that, that we used to watch those things. But, uh, he, and it didn't ring a bell for him. And it's really weird because my brother has like this, this um, uncanny memory. So, um, but I remember just maybe m those two things mixed together, like the, like the magic of pirates, you know, when I was younger and and then seeing that N.C. Wyeth um, uh, illustration, just, oof, just, it's too, it, it's like magic. It's, it's like the definition of like these imaginary worlds just coming to life. Um, and it was always, you know, nowadays when you see people doing uh, pre-production or, um, or when you're seeing, when you see concept work, um, it's not that it doesn't leave anything to imagination. I feel that the best of concept work has to have that bit of an aspect to it, but the notion, like the, the, the objective of you being a concept artist means that some of these things have to be, you know, fleshed out. They have to be articulated. So it can't be, you can't do something that is kind of left up in the air. It has to be um, in a way sort of finite enough that um, that other people can then take the idea that you had and, and flesh it out and, and, you know, quote unquote, finish it. Um, but there was something, that, there's always been something about Wyeth that I always felt it was, it was open enough that it, it just remained magical. It just, uh, the best of illustration, I feel, has to, you know, spell th certain things out for you. It has to echo certain things that are almost like unavoidable from the source that they are um, getting their information from. But then they have to leave so much stuff open for you because if not, then illustration is just iterative. It's just, if you read something and you see this kind of visual explanation of what you just read it's kind of boring it's like okay i just read that but you probably even imagined it more exciting than what it actually ended up being represented so the best of illustration tries not to express what is written but what is kind of like between you know the 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 like the uh descriptions of things um so i think wyeth was was just a an absolute genius like a beast doing that uh he had this perfect recognition of what needed to be said and what needed to be hinted at and um and then you fill in the rest like it's your job to just then bring some of that magic that you have in your imagination and and then finish the picture so yeah probably i would say him yeah it's a i have a very powerful memory of that painting so and i'm struggling quite a bit to think of other paintings that i feel as strongly attracted to um so so i'm gonna say that painting I, it's hard to find that painting Dan, uh, daniel Ira. so i i don't know if you'd be able to find it i think we found it for that video yeah. or i struggled quite a bit to find a decent one for that video maybe I think you can find it, but not like a particularly good one. No, but I think we have it in the video. So yeah, so if people want to check it out, it's a very, it's an old video. 
It's probably mid mid year first season. You know, I of, think it was earlier than mid year. Yeah. To be honest, oh, yeah. Really, I peaked that early with the <laughs> with those coins. Let me see. We can check super quickly, and I can um, post the link. Thank you, Daniel Ira. No, don't worry. Let's see. Mm. It is week 10. No way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's March the oh. 18th, oh. 2020. Oh, my God. It was that early? Yeah, I told you. It was like early our painted lives. Oh my god. Video. So this is the painting which by the way is one of my favorites. One of our best, I feel, yeah. yeah? Crazy good. Uh Rob <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you good there? <coughs> yeah. Oof. It was like a motica. Okay, yeah. And Mo I was matida. speaking in yeah. Yep, yep. Ate a yeah. Yeah, matida. Hakuna <laughs> mat matida. <laughs> Rob Fiori uh -huh. is saying, "Are you familiar?" <laughs> With the illustrations of Brad Holland. Of course, Especially yes. his pen and ink drawings. Yes, of course. He was very, very, like, he was the illustrator when I was, um, when I graduated. Uh, he was winning every society of illustrators. He was everywhere. Like, every, edi uh, blah, 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 blah. every editorial illustration was like a Brad Holland. So this is like late 90s, early 2000s, so... Yeah, he was very much like the sought after illustrator at the time. Um Volan I think, I think oh. a fantastic editorial illustrator. Volantera? Yeah. Was saying nobody's Vallejo, LOL. Yeah, I actually studied with uh Dorian. Well, Dorian went to SVA um earlier than, than I did. Dorian is probably would say seven, maybe eight years older than me, maybe. So uh, Dorian was amazing because he's just insanely talented. Um, and uh, he would go to class with us. Um, so it was it was really cool. But Dorian is Bor Borisis, Boris's son. So and I crazy uh, draft. Oh, person. my God. No, he's he's like. You know, Dorian. Crazy as in crazy good. Yeah, we have we have. Uh, er, by, by the way, don't sleep on it. He has a book, like a drawing book, mm -hmm. and you can get the like a special edition of that book oh. that has. He'll do like a drawing in the front end papers of the book. Yeah. Oh my God! If I could just split open that book and oh, frame yeah. that drawing. Yeah, Dorian is, is one so of the most good. naturally talented but also hardworking people i've ever met in my life he's tremendously talented yeah. uh he was amazing so i would have to say that i like his work better than his dad's you know and dorian when he was younger he was doing like conan covers and stuff so um he was an incredible incredibly talented um illustrator at the time mm, let's see uh, Cody Winnie Q is saying that's a good one. Treasure Island was on a different level for sure. Oh yeah. And uh, Liad was saying I wish Jay Z Lindecker oh, had Lindecker. done superhero comics. Oh Lindecker. I I didn't name him, but not because I'm no, trying to avoid did, him. No? no, I didn't name Lindecker, but oh my god. Oh, but you always do. Oh, I mean, Jesus I think. Christ. Well, how can you not? He's yeah. one of the best ever. Cody Winnicky was saying, I meant more like college years. Like you studied illustration, so you obviously had some ideas about it going to school. But yeah. then you sometimes get introduced to something that you that changes your idea. Oh, wow. Um, if something changed my idea you about know, I, illustration. But it, about illustration? Because I do think that something happened and changed you into wanting to focus on painting so that did happen yeah the university but i don't know regarding the just like the illustration world yeah i'm trying to think about it if something kind of shifted that for me in some way like if there was if there was like a measurable change or shift 
because of a, a particular image or work or I don't know. I don't know. I just I'm I'm I love almost like the whole of illustration, so it's very hard for me to just think of something that just changed the idea that I had about illustration. If if anything, and this is not like a cop out answer, but it it is very. It, I mean, it's the only thing that I can think of. But I think no, I think when I went to school, it it's kind of solidified what I loved. You know, it never really put things into question. Like I didn't question any of those things. I didn't. It didn't really change my mind. Made me change my mind. It was more of a oh hell yeah, these people were amazing. Like. Just the acknowledgement of how incredibly talent, like talented those people were. Um, so no, in that sense, I have to say probably not. Probably not. Mm. Let's see. Javi Hav dice, hola, hola. Just mm -hmm. jumped on and the portrait looks awesome. Nico, oh, thank you. Yes. what are your thoughts on Virgil Finlay? Oh, sí, 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 sí. no, but I don't know. Could you help me out? Mm. Should I? I always feel ignorant when I don't know something that I'm... Look. And I always feel I'm supposed to. Uh, could you turn a little bit just to show me something? So, maybe oh. you can see them. Oh, and, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, and it's all like uh, stippling, is it? Let me see. Yeah. It's like pen and ink, like little points, yeah. like, like little stippling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, no, it's pretty amazing. I wasn't, like, that's more like uh, Tales from the Crypty, pulpish sort of stuff, right? Um, uh, yeah, that's amazing. That's really, really amazing. Mm, let's see. Mm, so I'm going to go back. Yeah. To where we were before. Where were we? I have no idea. I'm just back. looking for it. Yeah. Okay. Way back. So before that, uh, Frankie Smith was saying gestural from the God painting. Yes. Uh, would that be? No, your painting. My painting. Yeah. Oh yes, and and maybe echoing some of the uh, Corinth painting too. So. Let's see. Uh, mm -hmm. Sergi Arts dice, nada más ya estoy adorando cómo se ve la pintura, esto fue hace rato, y dice, aspiro a poder alcanzar resultados así en mis primeros 30 minutos de la pintura. Eh, o sea, eso fue en los primeros 30 minutos, ya vamos hora y 30. Ah, no, ahora sí ya está como... Para... No. Y la cagaste, no. Nicolás. Decepción. <risa> Absoluta. No, 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 te digo es porque... Del cielo al infierno. Gracias por nada. Eric Carlson was saying, wanted to check how the painting goes before going to bed. Love those ears. Hope you have a good stream. Thank oh, you, Eric. Oh, thank you. Have a good sleep. Um... Benching Grab was saying, it's a real question you didn't answer. What? What uh, did I answer? Regarding the Orange is the New Black. Oh. For, um, I think it was Orange is the New Black for skin could you shadows, give me, could maybe? You, could you give me an example of, like, why you think it's it's uh, it's ever present in, in today's painting? I just can't think of something that is so, I don't know. Yeah, so the question was, do you think orange is the new black for shadows in the skin? I don't, I, I don't know. Like, if you ask me what colors, what color is shadow in the skin now as opposed to, well, I could, I could, you know, we have enough distance with um, the Baroque, for example, to say that shadows were earthier. Like, in painting, shadows were for sure earthier. But also, we'll go then in the conversation about the light. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's, how it's, your reference or the subject matter that you're gonna paint is affected by light. Yeah, because it's not like you can use orange for every single shadow. No, it that's depends what, that, a lot. 
Yeah. In and and honestly, you know, I I didn't um don't think of it as as just uh, me being dismissive. It's just that I don't when I think when you tell me orange is the shadow, orange is the new shadow for uh, I don't know depicting skin or people. I don't know. I don't even know how to understand that. And again, I'm not. This is not like um um. I'm not saying that what you're saying doesn't make sense to you. It's just that for me, it, I, like, there's so much painting today that I don't even know. Like Matt Bollinger, for example. Mm. If you tell me what sort of color he uses for painting people, I if or if you ask me what color does he use to paint people, I would say all of them. Yeah. I would say yes. All because he just doesn't... He doesn't stop at any sort of formula. Like he makes people in pinks and grays and oranges and blues and purples. And he does all of the colors. Um, so I don't know. Maybe that's why I'm asking first if you have like particular people uh, in mind that you think, okay, no, like look at these people nowadays and, and you can find um, you can find something that that is repeated. and. If you know, if if you show me that, that's amazing because maybe I haven't noticed it in maybe that particular niche of painters, but uh, but it'd be cool. But I just can't. I don't know. I can't think of anyone that that would, or any particular movement. Let's say not. Well, let's not say movement, or let's say any particular people that come from a school, from a specific school where they all paint evidently with earthier orange or orangey or shadows you know something like that i don't know so forgive me if i'm not understanding something but i wasn't being dismissive i'm just trying to make sense of it and and maybe it's just um a bit difficult for me to try to do that uh thais amorim was saying in portuguese so i'll let you do it oh please yeah go what oh do you want uh, me to make it uh, yeah. uh, turn it just a little bit just the screen oh Okay, my eyes are getting worse and worse. Jesus Christ. I should wear glasses to paint. Yeah. I should, yeah. Do you want me to bring no, them? No, no, no. It's good. The eyes are long gone. No. Where is it? Wait. I'm looking for it. If you would. Okay, I'm done. I'm done, Danny. I'm sorry, but... I'm sorry, but I can't uh, stay here for too long, Danny. I'm so it's sorry. this one. I'm gone. Okay. Oi, pessoa. Huh? Pessoal. Pessoal. So Taise. So Taise. 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 Namorada de Inacusa. Temos trabalhado juntos. Juntos? Soy designer gráfica e ele pintor. A dinâmica de vocês nos inspira muito. Obrigada por compa compartilhar com tanta gente. Tanta gente. Tanta, tanta gente. Uh, I guess there are a couple of artists. Yeah, because remember that yeah. Inakusa was saying that they yeah. were watching it with uh, their Taizi. girlfriend. So Thais is uh, Inakusa's girlfriend. And? Oh. Uh, so Thais, yes, we, we are a couple and we're artists. And it's super cool when you can find somebody that you can share a lot of what you like with. So and that's No, awesome. no, no, but you're missing this. Uh, vamos a uh, tentar visitarlos. Uh, vamos a tentar visitarlos en septiembre. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, please. Sao Paulo. Yeah. Grande, Sao Paulo. Sí, Beleza. Grande, bien grande. Beleza, legal, Sao Paulo. A ver. Eh, a ver. A ver, a ver. Mm, me perdí. ¿Todo bien? Acá. Brendan Kendrick was saying, last few days we've heard about your favorite all-time paintings, but I'm interested to know what your favorite, quote-unquote, still life paintings are. Oof, that's interesting. Uh, favorite still life paint. I have I, I, I have to think of it, but I, I obviously have some. Uh, there's probably some Uglo in there. There probably has to be an Uglo in there because he's just, it's just way too powerful to not be there. So I would pick something super, like, 
super simple from Uglo. Maybe the bread or maybe the um the um the banana. You know, something as but it's the banana of Uglo sim like signifying his look on like his, the the way he observed objects. But I think that that's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Um but it, it could be a piece of bread, it could be the daisies. It could be anything from Uglo. Honestly, he's he's fantastic. Like the uh, pears. Um, yeah. So I would have to put an Uglo there. I would probably have to put um, some Antonio Lopez there also. Yeah, it could be the... Uh, I mean, if it's a still life, the sink or the, um, the rabbit. What uh, was it? What was the, the still life? Which one? No, no, no. No, no, no. Let me think better about it. The still life at the dinner table of Ant Antonio Lopez's painting. Oh, my God. That has like a little cutout, mm -hmm. like a collage cutout. The one of the egg and the piece of meat. Oh, I love that still life because it's so weird. It's so strangely contemporary also. It's so eclectic in a way, but he just made it work. And it, it produces like such an eerie effect in the painting. I love that painting. I think that. It's probably in my top three Antonio Lopez paintings for sure. Um, I'm thinking about there was a video, yeah, that you were talking about a still life that had some fish, oh, and wow. how you could almost smell Sh Shahdan, the button. maybe Shahdan, yeah, and you were referring to that as, or maybe uh, Sutin, Sutin, Sutin does like hell of a still lives. So maybe yeah, we could we could have some Sutin there, some hanging. Some of the hanging um, uh, chicken of Sutin. Oh, the the carcass, the beef carcass of Rembrandt, mm -hmm. and Sutin and bacon. Yeah, that's probably that's pretty good. I feel um, the open sink with running water of Lucian Freud. Jesus Christ, that's good. Um, what else? You just named them all. Yeah. I, well. No, no, no. You just. Name all so, like keep going. I was saying like yeah, no, no, no. I'm 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 like thinking. I'm running around in in my brain, just trying to think of if if something pops up, um, kind of like that. But um, what else? Mm. Hmm. Let me think. Oh, oh, but what, what's his face? Um, oh, Jesus, what's come his on. Face? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just trying to remember his name, and I, I'm going to be incredibly embarrassed if I don't remember his name. Oh, come on. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm squinting so hard. Oh, Jesus Christ. I feel like an idiot because he's, like, honestly, he's the reason. He's one of the reasons, but he's an enormous reason for our painted lives being the format that it was. Um, okay, I, I give up. Could you check a painting a day? Just check a painting a day. And it's just, could you remind me of his name? I'm, I'm such an idiot. This is? It's, he had a, you know, blog, but. Dwayne Kaiser? N Dwayne Kaiser, yes. Kaiser, I'm sorry. Yeah. So Dwayne Kaiser is probably one of the most talented, naturally talented painters, like, I don't oh, know, Yes, ever. you've talked about... Oh, yeah. No, he is. And he painted daily, and he would put yeah. his paintings up for sale. Not not quite like we do, Wasn't but it, he would... Like uh, he, yeah, he would auction them yeah, off on yeah, eBay. Yeah. So some paintings c you could get for maybe a couple of hundred dollars, and then other paintings would be, you know, very sought after, and they would go for thousands of dollars. But, but uh, Dwayne Kaiser... Um, does you know some incredible eggs and fruit and uh um what is like what is it like a quintessential quintessential Dwayne Kaiser PB and J sandwich yeah. his PB and J sandwich is like stop it like that that's just too good of a painting but he's amazing he he is 
absolutely incredible. So it says the bidding starts at one hundred, and they range from one hundred to four thousand. Yeah, yeah. I was. I always wanted something of his. Always, always wanted something of his. But obviously, you know, when when you don't have like I I was younger at that time, and you don't have a lot of money to spend. Hmm. I would always be like, oh, this one I want to bid. Like I want to try to get this one. And obviously, the ones that you would like were the ones that a lot of people were liking too. So yeah. they would end up being thousands of dollars. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's yeah. Uh, Not for me then. Emily Hales was saying, "Procreate is free. I would love to see how you approach digital painting." No, but I think you have to pay for. I mean, you have to pay for Procreate. It's. I think it's cheap. It's like ten dollars. Yeah, I don't. I don't really know if but they've it's made not, it free, but no, I don't think it it's is. Not free. Yeah, I don't think it is. Eh, Felipe Leoni dice, "Hola, jóvenes, jóvenes." Muy, muchas gracias. Good afternoon. Lo... Painting along the same reference with you guys. Oh, oh awesome. that's too so cool. I if love you when people want do that. to show us, I mean, if you're painting the same reference, uh, you as in everyone, and you want to share it, or maybe if you're painting something of your own and you want to share it, you could use the hashtag on Instagram, hashtag our painted lives, so we can check it out. The criminally underused uh, yes. hashtag. Yes, you should start using it more. No, not really. You, you guys shouldn't. You should. No. Start no. right now. No. No, I'm joking. No, but yeah, I, I know we're joking. It's... I like. I love to, to see, like, all the things that yeah, people. Yeah, this can. is. This would be for our enjoyment. It, yeah. it would be for nothing. We're else, not yeah. trying to push a brand or something no. like that. So. Well, it has like, twenty. Yeah, uh, yeah. Some people have used it over over so. the years, and and. S you know, with very specific weeks that we have jokingly or we have said, oh, you have to share it through here. But um, but no, no, people don't have to. We're Do not anything. trying to push a hashtag or anything like that. Liad was saying, I can help if you need help with digital painting, Nicolas. I would welcome that help. You know, maybe one day we can hang out and just um, I can ask some questions and you can clear stuff up for me. But because I'm, I'm very... Um, my mind gets super boggled with with I get like an, like anxiety when I see too many layers. Like I'll see some of my favorite people working in Photoshop, and I see so many layers that I get like agita. I I really can't deal with it. It's too much. So, yeah, like Evan Amundsen, I think he's one of the most talented people working today, and Evan's work is incredible, but. You know, when I've been able to see his his layers, I'm like, oh my God, how do how do I how could I ever teach my brain to think that way? And I just don't know how to think that way. Rosaline Dion was saying hello my everyone. Heart. Let's hey, go on. Rosaline, how are you? What time is it uh where you are? Rosaline? You know, we were talking we were talking about Sargent or Rembrandt the other day. Mm -hmm. And Rosalind is doing like these amazing Sargent copies. I did. I yeah. did saw it. I did. You did see it. I did see it. Yeah. I did saw. Well, you you already have the past when you do say did, so you you just have to say the verb. Okay, so I did saw it. <laughs> okay. No, I'm yeah. joking. I I did see well, it. Well, you could have you could have said I did saw it. Like I did saw it in half, like meaning that you just saw it with a saw. Or that I just saw it. Like in uh saw machine? it in half. Saw it. No. No, sewn. Like sewing. No, you you, you I, did, I did sewn? No. I did sew it. I did sew it, yeah. Sew it. But uh, you didn't say sew it. I did sew it. No, no, no. That would never be. Okay, I as did a... sew it, Rosalind. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine was saying, So Danny, why don't you give us a live stream demo of Procreate? That would be fun too. Oh Catherine, but I mean, Nicolas was being very nice saying that I use Procreate because I did use it for the graphics, for the edited videos, but I have never painted on Procreate. I just use them as like a place to do the graphics and I would also use them to do like tiny, I don't even know if I should call them stop motions, but like tiny animations frame by frame for the um, 
but tiny, tiny. I mean, don't think about him as like a huge uh, animation for the video. So I really don't know how to uh, use it as people that paint there do. So, yeah. Oh, you know what I want to to learn? Mm. Um, heavy poly. Because it's it's a it's a really strange. It's a really really heavy cool. poly. Yeah, heavy poly. It's a really cool. I actually have it. I bought it actually, but um, I don't have it installed here. I had it in the other drive that we had, but um, I love the look of that thing. I really do. But it's such a weird program. It's such a weird software. Um, but I absolutely love the people that use it well. Yeah, I'm just seeing it. The thing is that, you know me, I'm a lot more, like I need the, like the material. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So it would be hard for me to, to uh, do. Oh, I would. I could take a year off and paint <laughs> digitally, I feel. You always say, I could take a year off. Maybe I just paint. want a year off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's all I want. Maybe that's what I'm, ge I'm getting to. Uh, it's like, please. Leslie Cavazos Garduño is saying, hi, Gava guys and girls. Guys and gals. Gals and gals. Uh. Gals and guys. Yeah. So the quarantine po poster yesterday, so amazing. Congrats. Um. Yeah, I think there's... Um, forget how many spots they told me that I have open, maybe two or three left, something like that. Oh, you? I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, oof, it's going to be a trip, I guess, that, that, uh, that workshop. It is very, very strange and very specific and I don't know. It's, it's a chance to do something bold and weird. It doesn't look like anything that um, I've either been a part of or gone to. So I'm, I'm very excited. I think uh, there's a lot of people already, um, a lot of people already applied and enrolled. Yep. So woof, it's going to be exciting. I mean, for sure, strange, different. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Irvin Torres Art dice, he estado trabajando en lo de mi taller de arte y también hice varios encargos a fin de año. Qué chévere, Irvin. Varios proyectos a la vez y también plaveando nueva obra. Planeando, Planeando. supongo. Qué sí. bueno, qué bueno, Nueva Irvin. obra. A veces me es difícil estar en los envíos y carita triste. No, no importa, todo está bien. No importa, siempre, Irvin, y lo bueno es que... Siempre pensando a Irvin. Eh, y también quedan los videos ahí para cuando Irvin los pueda ver. Y ya subimos el segundo short. Por si de pronto alguien no lo ha visto. Eh, creo que está chévere. A mí me gusta mucho. Sí, Dani está trabajando ahí chévere. Tratando de como de sintetizar lo que pasa en las transmisiones. Estoy tratando de... I'm sewing oh, God. your words together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good word. I mean, yes, sewing. Yes. Sewing. I mean, I mean, a good use of the word. Yes. I would sew the word. I would so want you to stop it. Yeah. Um, Elaine Shukri was saying Elaine. good morning, beautiful people. Hey, How Elaine, are you, Elaine. Good afternoon. How are you? Good to hear from you, Elaine. Liad was saying, I love iced coffee. And Elaine was saying, oh, iced coffee with cream and ice cream. Oh, right. I think with I, I remember Elaine cream? saying, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, that sounds like a very cool yeah. uh, dessert. I would have it. I would have it a as my last meal. <laughs> Um, what would you have as your last meal? And don't me? think of anything like, uh, you know, you're going to be executed and this is your last meal. No, no, no. Think of like the world is ending tomorrow, but people are super okay with, with it. Like we've come, we are at peace with ourselves knowing that we're gone. So do I have to? Like just... they know that the, the planet is going to blow up. But everyone's think, like at peace. No, there's no chaos no, on the street. No, no, I get it. I, I wasn't even thinking about it. I was but I gotta worried give you about some context. I, I got to give worried you a, about food. I got to give you a little bit of context, so so that because you know, chances <laughs> are that if you if you know that the world is ending, it's like, hey, dude, I don't want to eat. Like, no, if it's something like I, super no, tragic. Come on, I got what you were saying. So let me think. Yeah. 
Um, because I think it would depend on the day, to be honest. On the day? Yeah. I mean, oh, if you so ask me sorry. today. Like the universe is like, we're going to blow no, up your planet. it's not if it's a Friday I'm or sorry. A Saturday. The soup du jour is like, it, it's different today from what you wanted. Sorry. So I feel that I have different cravings. So I would go for my, for a burger. For a burger? Yeah. Good hamburger. Yeah, very good. Very good. With, uh, I like my burgers to have double meat and double cheese i mean it's the last time you're gonna eat in your in in your life and your species so existence. triple meat yeah go for it uh triple cheese you could be super decadent go but also yeah i would love to have my favorite sushi oh do you think you could have both maybe yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it's my last one, I'm not going to feel bad afterwards. You're going to feel very full. But also, what else? Because I love my uh, grandma's ajiaco. You're going to make her cook for your last meal? Well, if it's my last meal, yes, maybe. Oh, my God. She's there thinking about her last meal, and she's like, I'm sorry. I have to cook for her. <laughs> um. Yeah, I would love that. Mm. What else? Mm, I would have a gelato. Okay. Mm. I think the end of the world is going to catch you in the bathroom. Wow, you know what I, I would have? What's that? When we were in Rome, yeah, I had the best pasta I've had in my life. But not like in general. I mean, pasta there is amazing. Yes, it's Italy. But one specific restaurant yeah. had my... All time favorite pasta. Like I've seafood, tried. um, seafood pasta. Oh my god, it was so good and it had like a spicy, uh, tomato like sauce, sauce to it. Yeah, which I mean, I know that's a like a dish that they do in other restaurants because I've had it here. Yeah, but ne never but like not, that. Not that one. I mean, that one was like a taste of heaven. Okay, well, that's where you're so, going after that meal. I don't know so. if you remember, but I told you that day. You were I very, mean, we were having, yeah. Yeah, we were having that dinner, and I was saying that this was the best pasta and that I was just, like, waiting for the next time I could have it, even if I haven't even, like, Finished had the all the food. Yeah. yeah. I was just sad because I knew that it would be long before I could have another bite of that um deliciousness overload okay so that that would be your your yes well that with the hamburger and the um, a little bit of a hiaco and the sushi and gelato okay i think you're the reason that the world is ending <laughs> yeah. i mean i think your explosion <laughs> is uh yeah. the equivalent of uh many many bombs going off yeah um yeah that's a lot for you, pizza. what would it be? No, pizza. pizza. Yeah, Pepperoni super simple. Pizza. Pepperoni pizza. Extra cheese. That's it. Yeah, I don't... Yeah. But not pizza with ice cream and with like... a brownie as a dessert? No, no, no. Because I ruin it. No, 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 you, no. Because then I'm with like... With an apple pie? No, it doesn't matter. With um, a tea? No, you could, you could try to say all the things, but it just ruins it. Okay. When I have pizza, like... If if during the day I have pizza, I don't eat anything else. It's too much. So, but because it's just terrible pizza, I'm imagine, just so happy to have it as the only thing. Would you imagine ordering your last pizza ever? Yeah, and, and they is, get the order wrong. No, and it's terrible. Because uh, I mean, why would it ordered, be terrible? Because we've ordered and they're like not that good sometimes. Well, you would think like it, it would be very selfish for people having to cook stuff for you. In the last yeah, because day on you're Earth? thinking that everyone's going to it's like everyone's last day, so then no one would eat, and yeah, everyone yeah, so would let's just think like cry everyone, and die. No, it's everyone just is doing whatever your, they normally do. Yeah, it's your last day. You don't oh, think about okay. the people. That that's why I was saying that maybe maybe my grandma. Oh, okay, but I just wanted the world to go with me. But okay, fine. Uh, because then no one would be cooking your pizza. I know, I know that doesn't make sense, but still. Um, no, pizza for me, for sure. Yeah, there's no question about it. Yeah. I, I, I need very little to be very, very happy, so. Rosaline Dion, 
was saying, I'd want potato soup for my last meal. Oh, very My good. daughter is very with hearty. me and says she'd want Thanksgiving dinner. Ooh, very <gasps> nice. You know something Get I to love, work. Rosalind? The stuffing? Yeah. That's not th not not that. that. That's not something we have here. No, no, no. It's not part it's of not our... It's not like a traditional dish Oh, here. no, not at all. Oof, it's so good. <gasps> I don't know. Biscuits. Oh. As an entree. No, no, no. If I'm having biscuits, then I'm having like 10 biscuits. As and an that's en it. big entree. Big entree? Big entree. Una entrada um, grande. Um, no. No, no, no. I mean, if it, I could say biscuits. And then just do biscuits, like biscuits all day. Marcelo Brando that would was saying, me up, though. there is no such thing as bad pizza. Even bad pizza is good pizza. Yeah, that's the same thing with burger. So, um, let's see. Mm, where was I? I don't know. Carla Looking Clara. for Alka Seltzer, I think. <laughs> After your last no, meal. No, because that's not what I ate. Yeah. Uh, Carla Anglada was saying, I just bought some matcha tea because you made it sound so good. I'm enjoying oh it God. now. Yummy. Oh, what? that's good. How are you preparing it, Carla? So I do the oh so the little splash of water. Uh, the indoctrination With starts. the scoops of matcha. Mm -hmm. Then I whisk it. Oh, God. Then I add more water, because if you do it in a whole water, then it would be grainy. That's a good tip. And then I add a little bit of uh, vanilla creamer. That's how I like my matcha. How do you like yours, Carla? Just tell her exactly like she described. Mm, let's see. Uh, mm. Joao Gabriel Tavares da Cruz Gabriel was asking in Portuguese. Portuguese. So do you want to do it again? Uh, Joao. Já, já participou de alguma escola de artes? É, seja qual for sua, for sua? sua experiência. É, já estou parecendo um jornalista. Ha, ha, ha. So like a lot of uh, questions. I... I Oh, ¿en español? Did, ¿En español? Sí, yo fui a una escuela de arte. Yo, yo estudié en Nueva York, en una escuela que se llama Escuela de Artes Visuales, SVA, en, en Nueva York. Allá estudié. Eh, Jornalista. Dice, Jornalista. Ignacio Casas dice, Dios mío, qué taza tan grande. Ja, ja, ja. ¿Cuánto líquido entra ahí? ¿La de Bob Esponja? No pues, es tan... es, A ver, no. No, so, las tazas en esta casa son grandes. Sí. Punto. Sí. Pero eh, esta no es la más grande. Si Ignacio se sorprendió, tiene que ver la taza que yo usé ayer. Parecía una pecera con eh, un asa para cogerla. Eh, sí. Es una pecera. Realmente. Y la verdad, eso es eh, muy... Eso es algo que adquirí gracias a el lado Benninghoff. Oh, sí. Eso es algo que en la casa de la mamá de Nicolás, la mamá de Nicolás tiene eh, tazas que de verdad sí son peceras. En donde se puede lavar son ropa. Tinas, son, sí. O sea, son eh, bastante grandes. Y yo, eh, mm. yo caí en eso. Mm -hmm. Y estoy feliz de haber caído en eso. No caí dentro de la taza. No, no te ahogas. Pero, sí. Sí, yo por eso digo, Ignacio, que el segundo matcha mío, la verdad, es como si me hubiera tomado cuatro al día. Porque acá acaban como dos. Bueno, en esta Bien, no entonces. tanto, en la otra. Uh, let's see. Juan Carlos Pinilla Melo dice, saludos, qué bueno ver, volverlos a ver. Una pregunta sí, señor. sobre qué material estás pintando, qué tipo de lienzo es. No, no es lienzo, es papel. Es un papel crudo, está sin preparar. Eh, Juan Carlos Martínez Belyosh dice, por cierto, Nico, el retrato sí, de Dani que nombraste, Earthing, sí. es para mí algo fuera de este mundo, asombroso. Tengo una sensación agridulce acerca de que no haya un video de cómo lograste esa pieza. ¿Recordarás cómo fue el proceso de esa pieza? 
tu estado mental, qué intención tenías. Disculpa tantas preguntas, pero me dejó muy choqueado ese retrato. No, 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 incluso, o sea, sin, sin eh, quererlo eh, trivializar, no, realmente es como un ejercicio que estábamos haciendo para el curso de pintura que estamos dictando ahora. Entonces, de nuevo, sin querer trivializarlo, porque pues no es que... Yo creo que yo cuando pinto algo realmente tengo una intención de, de, de pintar todo lo que pinto, pero, pero fue más como la aceptación de ese ejercicio y, y buscar como una manera expresiva de tratar de resolverlo. Eh, pero Y, y en, en realidad es un ejercicio relativamente simple y es un ejercicio técnicamente muy simple de replicar lo que lo hace bonito, lo que lo hace súper, súper bonito, porque no es, en esencia, no pintar así o abordar la pintura de esa manera no es algo muy complejo. Eh, de pronto una pintura que tenía eh, como en mente de hacer de mi mamá, la puedo resolver de esa manera. De pronto, de pronto me voy a animar como de, a, a hacer esa pintura de esa, de esa forma, con esa técnica. Pero es, es muy sencillo, es... Es literalmente como eh, trabajar con un, una tierra transparente y, y añadir blanco como a ciertos acentos. Entonces es como si estuvieras haciendo un dibujo en carbón con, eh, sobre un papel entonado y con una tiza blanca. Es literalmente eh, ese mismo proceso. Javier Ugarte dice, tazas para bañar a Chile. Bueno, esas son hasta las del expreso. Pero, sí. Eh, Daniel Berberich was saying, LOL, tell us how you really feel about matcha, Nick. Oh, I hate it. I, I hate it. He says it uh, tastes like soap. It, it does taste it like does soap. It does not. Yeah, it's horrendous. Carla Anglado is saying, I enjoy mine with some almond creamer. So I do that too. Gently stirred. Oh God! I'm Look missing out. Like I didn't realize about the whisking. Oh, you have to. You have to do it. I mean, that's how I learned to do it. And you have to do it with very hot water. Even if you're gonna drink it cold, you should do the mixing of the, the matcha powder in very hot water so it does dissolve completely so you don't have the like little lumps. And then you can add uh, cold water or hot water to the rest of the cup depending on how you want to have it but yeah all of that is for it to taste like soap That's for it amazing. to taste so good yeah next time just lick a bar of soap Dean Harden super quick Dean Harden was saying are you drawing the ear wrong on purpose for expressive reasons um yeah I saw one that was lower than the other one and I thought it looked amazing so I'm going for the Very different um, um, hemispheres. So this is probably one that's a little more um, balanced. And then this one's just, you know, totally imbalanced. But maybe if uh, what, um, who was telling us about his life? That he suffered a stroke? Maybe that's... Uh, Peter Smeekins. Yeah, maybe if what Peter was saying um, is um, is true. And I have no, no reason to doubt that it isn't true. Um, Maybe some of the things, the subtle things that I'm seeing are consequences of the stroke. So maybe. Diane Hunter. Hey, Diane. Uh, so we can see that Diane did. In oh, fact, two days. Press the uh, press bell. The button. Ring the bell. And subscribe. Ring the bell. So thank you so much, Diane. Diane was saying, do you use the Sorn palette in oil or acrylic? And what black do you use? Ivory black or Mars black or bone black? So I use, uh, I very rarely, I mean, there's been just a week, I feel, or maybe two weeks that we painted in acrylics because it's not, it's not something I'm super interested in. I think you did acrylic gouache. No, no, no. We did acrylics too. Really? Yeah. Um, what? Painting a fed of you from my imagination, like conjuring some like spell or something like you were a witch oh the ones we bought in the mall yeah some ch very cheap oh ones. perfect yeah, yeah 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 i do remember yeah yeah um so i don't think we have a lot of uh, paintings that are in acrylic to be super super honest um very much in awe of people that paint with acrylics um 
James Jean is amazing at painting with acrylics, I feel. Um, I, I'm just not, you know, I'm just not James. I'll say that straight. But um, yeah, I just don't know how to use them, you know, because I think there's still like a pull from oil painting every time I paint. So maybe that um, makes me be stubborn and not pay attention to what is available you know, when I paint with acrylics and I spend most of the time just trying to make acrylics behave like oils, which is, you know, dumb, which is very, very dumb. But um, no, it's always oil paint. And your second part of the question was, I love ivory black. I think it's a, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous black. I think it's, it's probably the most beautiful black pigment. I can understand if people that don't want um, animal products don't use uh, bone black uh, for obvious reasons, but I think it's it's very very beautiful. I just love the how it behaves uh, transparently. I love how it kind of changes a little bit of its nature when you add uh, titanium white to it. So there there's so much about it that I I think it's like perfect. Um, the only downside I would say is that it's a pretty fragile black. Um, and, uh, and it, the drying time is horrendous. So I'd say those two things are, are the only things that, that you have to keep in mind if you're using ivory black. So, uh, Rawan was saying, I missed you guys. Missed you too, Rawan. Happy new year. No. How are you? No, what? They're going to think that you didn't miss them. No, I do. Period. I, I'm just um, tired of the, the new year. Yes. Um, let's see. Corey Krumnaker was saying, I have a... For, what? Okay, I get it. I have a question for you, if that's okay. Yes, please. How do we separate all our artistic tastes from the work we do? I enjoy and appreciate so much that finding my own artistic voice has been hard. I feel pulled in so many directions yeah. that my work feels all over the place. Do we just follow the joy and see where that takes us? Short answer, yes. Yeah, I would say yes, because the uh, what's the alternative? Like, you can't have all those influences just coming together. It would be like a mess. That, would, that melting point would be crazy. So, melting po pot, I'm sorry. Melting pot would be crazy. So um, what else can we do but just to try to, to um, you know, decipher which one of those has more pull, like which, which one of those things that is constantly moving us has a little bit more pull than the others. And that's our job, to try to identify those things. And then to follow whatever path is configured by putting those things together and say, okay, this is a mess. I don't know where this is going to take me, but, you know, I'm, I'm here for the ride. So, yeah, I would say maybe you're overthinking it. Just, you know, just take that first step. Because, yeah, it's very tough. Like, I don't know. I, I think I consider myself a person that loves so many things that pull me to so many different directions that it would be absurd for me to understand, you know, some sort of unity. Like you symbolize unity, right? Because you are the vessel in which all these things come together in the end, or you're supposed to be. Um, but I, I would never be able to understand myself if I just saw the thousands of directions in which things would be pulling me. Like it would literally, almost like a torture device, it would just tear me apart. So I do think that it's, the, the, the onus is on you to say, where do, like, I have to begin to walk. What direction do I, you know, do I begin to walk towards? Um, that is all up to you. Like a thousand percent up to you. Nobody else can make that decision for you. Yeah, I think we've talked about this before. And I think we also, when we were talking about this, uh, we were touching on something that I feel is important too. Mm -hmm. That is the fact that 
you should start recognizing what you like and what you would like to do. Because I do think that if you get enamored by every single thing and, and you try to like emulate the things you see just because you felt that they produced something in you, but you're just like romping, uh, jumping, I'm sorry, all over the place, I don't think that's going to be that helpful. And I think that we were talking about this, like, I mean, you enjoy uh, tons of different uh, painting approaches. Yes, for sure. But that doesn't mean that you are going to paint in every single no. way that the people that you like the paintings paint. No, so I do impossible. think that that's very important. Yes. To, to understand what you like, but also to understand what you want to be as an artist or, or what you are as an artist or when, when you're painting, what like calls your attention and, and to what side do you want that like to push that painting to? Because if you see an abstract painting and you're enamored by it and you do an abstract painting, but then you see a like super academic painting uh, and you want to go there too and you're just, just like jumping because there are things that move you, but you're not recognizing that maybe they move you because they are great, but they are great for that artist and not for you. I think that that would be not beneficial for you. So... I thought yes. you were going to say something. No, no, no. I totally... No, 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 I, I thought you were moving your mouth. So oh, I, tend I to, stopped. I tend to do that um, <laughs> by being alive. Um, <laughs> no, I totally agree with you. I totally, totally agree with you. I just think, I think it's tough. I think it is, it's not something that is apparent or easy. Um, and there's never like a right or wrong uh, like answer to that question. It's one of those things that we each have to um, we each have to figure out. There's there's nothing, you know, nobody else could do for us in that instance. Um, this is all up to us. Mm. So Irvin Torres Art was saying some sometimes I think there's too much great art to pick favorites. But there are always works and artists close to my heart for personal reasons. Also, it's so great when you discover new gems. Oh, yeah, for sure. Catherine Poremsky was saying, Does anyone remember who did that painting of the green plaid jacket with a slice of ham on it? Speaking of weird still lifes. Green plaid jacket with a slice of ham. No, but I want to see it now. Oh, I'm trying to... I mean, it would have... Ring a bell. I, mm. Oh, no. What? Wait. Did you did you search green plaid jacket slice of ham? No. Maybe someone in the comments uh can help us out if maybe they know what Catherine was talking about. Mm. Corey Krumnaker was saying, Oh, I don't know if you have heard of the app Heavy Paint. It's by Heavy Poly, and yes. the application seems like a painter's dream. Oh, did I say? Well, maybe I said, said Heavy Poly. Heavy Poly, yeah. Yeah, as, yes, yes, yes. So, sorry, I, so I was referring to Heavy Paint. Oh, because when I Googled, I Googled Heavy Poly. Yeah, well, that's the company. I no, feel. no, no, yeah, but I, I mean. Yes, yeah, sorry, my mistake. Oh, it looks very cool. Yes. <gasps> Look, a chihuahua. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, let's see. Liad was saying, Nicolas, anytime I'm awake, happy to hang out. You awesome. don't need all those layers. You can do it all in one layer if you want. Thank you. Awesome. M-A-Q-U was saying, plus one for the heavy paint. 
Um, so thank you. They were telling you. Oh. About your painting, Nicolas. Mm. Or not? No, for the. Oh, the app, of yeah. course. I was like, oh, maybe they don't know that you don't use any medium or. Oh, heavy as in like, oh, that yeah. looks like chunky ass paint. Uh, Liad was saying, heavy paint is an interesting app. A lot of good features and simple to use, but also, unless I'm mistaking, a lot of limitations. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's 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 um clear boundaries to it, which is what makes it super cool when people use something that that um that has you know it's 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 very clear that it can produce like a certain work of art but you work within those parameters um i kind of like those things So, uh, Catherine Peremsky said, I found it. It's Marguerite Maldemare, the Could painting. Oh, wow. I mean, I wasn't quite expecting oh. that one. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that's pretty cool, actually. I yeah. like the way they uh, sold the, the jacket. No, the jacket, uh, like the... Both of it, but like all of it. And then that sun. Oof. Oh, my God. That's a punchy-ass painting. I would have a hard time living with that painting, I think. Mm, let's see. Mm. Emily Hales was saying, I'm using heavy paint right now as we speak, and it's no amazing. I just started using it this week, but I'm really happy with it. Oh, I nice. use it with Procreate and the way I can have every and that way I can have everything I need. Nice, very nice. Um Oh fuck. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Rosaline Dion was saying, I'll be at quarantine and I'm excited slash nervous. <gasps> Rosaline. Makes two of us, Rosaline. Oh, that's so cool. You do have to take a picture together and send it to me. I'll try to avoid her as much as I can. Uh, yes. Rosaline. It's so bad uh, that we're not going to meet Rosaline, but we will soon. I know that. Uh, Marta Sánchez dice El short, fantástico Lo vi esta tarde Gran curro de edición, Dani Muchas gracias, Marta Tan bonita eh, Marcelo Peralta was saying The shorts are great, Dani They remind me so much of the early days or Of OPL Yes, yes That's what we were uh, Intending to, to do with it mm, And I'm happy that you are enjoying it Mm. Rosalind was saying, honestly, I have no idea what's happening there. I just have a goal of, quote unquote, producing over practicing my art making. We'll see. Nice. Um, Cody Winicky was saying, I want to apply for qu quarantine so bad, but I don't think it's in the cards this year. It's okay. It's okay. Mm. Let's see. Nicolás Olivari dice, Dani Nicolás, hola desde San Petersburgo. ¿Cómo va todo? Uy. Hola Nicolás, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo va todo? ¿Cómo está el clima, Nicolás? Hace rato no hablábamos. No está por acá. ¿Qué tal el regle regreso? El regreso a clase. <ríe> el regreso a clases, Nicolás. Mm. Osobuco Donosor, también llevaba tiempo sin estar acá Osobuco. Dice, hola chicos, los enganché mientras dibujo un retrato de Spinetta, músico argentino. Qué chévere, ¿Lo claro. conocen? Saludos, claro. claro. Y dice, me encanta cuando haces esas proporciones exageradas en un rostro. ¿Sabes quién era fan de Spinetta? Yo me acuerdo, Eduardito. ¿Sí? Sí, que ob creo 100%. obviamente, ¿no es sí, cierto? Sí. Obviamente, te iba a ser fan. Uh, Corey Krumnaker was saying, I've got to go, but I'll watch the rest of the live later. Thank you guys for streaming. The painting is looking great. Oh, thank so, you. Have a good rest of the day, Corey, and take care of your hand. Please. 
H. H. Melton, H. H. Melton, perdón, uh -huh. dice, hola, me alegran los días cada vez que están en línea pintando. Tan amable que seas. ¿Cuándo sale el libro del proyecto? Y una pregunta de curiosidad, ¿de qué tamaño es el cuadro más grande que has pintado? Eh, H. H. Melton, el libro ya salió, el libro ya se envió, eh, lo enviamos en diciembre a las personas que habían apoyado eh, la campaña de Kickstarter. ¿Y que, cuál es el tamaño más grande que has pintado? Eh, las, era como un lienzo de tres, algo, tres, diez por tres, una cosa así, tres, como diez y algo por tres. Eh, entonces, digamos, un poquito oh. más de tres metros por tres metros. Mm. Liad was saying, don't use ivory black. Mars is good and chromatic black is good. Basically, any black other than ivory, LOL. Yeah, I know. I know that um, uh, Liad is obviously against um, any use of, of animals to produce anything for, um, for painting or consumption. So I totally respect that and I totally understand. As if. As if. I was saying, and that beautiful portrait of Nico's father in acrylics, which just floored me. Mm. Uh, ¿Cuál fue? No, but the one of my dad, as if, el de mi papá, ese fue en óleo. ¿Pero será alguno del canal? ¿El que era como hiciste? de la imaginación? Sí, ese fue en óleo. Sí, ¿no? sí, ese fue en óleo, si sí, no estoy mal. Estoy tratando de acordar. No, sí, sí, ese fue óleo. 100%. Acrílico. A ver, miremos, miremos. No, porque en acrílico hice una pintura de Fer. Hice... Ah, hice el pelo ese todo loco. Eh... Sí, mira. A ver, acrílico. No, no, yo me acuerdo. Una de Fer. Hiciste a Fer en la hiciste silla. Mark S, el de Severance. Ah, verdad, verdad, verdad. Hiciste uno mío multitasking, sí, que era comiendo leyendo, sí, el del pelo a, de Samu y a Fer, Fer ah, sí, en la, en la mesa, con, sí, sí, sí ya, ya me acuerdo de las pinturas a ver eh hmm. por ahí una campanita moviéndose de Chile uh -huh. ¿No? sí, claro, ahí ya se estaba despelucando eh, have you have with saying what does fragile mean when you describe the black? Oh, it's very brittle, for example. You're not meant to um, use it thickly. Mm, you know, it's, it's um, in painting history, usually that black is the one that cracks quite a bit, quite a bit when people work on it without letting it dry thoroughly. But the thing is, you just need to dry. You just need for it to dry for so so long that it's kind of annoying. Um, it's not a huge problem for me because I work a lot of paint. A lot of these paintings are Alla Prima paintings, so natural problems occur uh, when you are layering paint on top of that black or just using it uh, a little too thickly. So yeah, MCA that's, oh. that's the reason. Sorry, MCLA film. So David was saying hi D and N. Ooh. Just so started watching. Did you talk about how you came up with the colors you're painting? It looks incredible. Love it. Um, no, I went with the traditional, uh, uh, you know, Zorn way of thinking, which is uh, throw everything into the pot. Um, uh, I'm joking, but uh cool thing about a, a, a Zorn palette is that it's very, very hard. I mean, we can always ruin a painting. We can find myriads of ways of, of ruining a painting, but um, um, Zorn, a Zorn color palette has this ability to um, make everything super, super tight because it's actually super small. It's a very, very small palette. Um, and by small palette, I don't mean obviously small because the choices are few. Um, but just the fact that it's the, uh, the colors are, you know, in some weird way, they are very much primary colors like yellow, red, and let's say this acts as a blue, but they're also quite analogous in a very strange, strange way. So it's almost weird to try 
it's almost weird to just ruin it to say oh my god these colors just don't go one one with the other when you're doing a a zorn color a zorn when you're using a zorn palette to um to solve your colors in your painting they just kind of naturally feel analogous they they feel like whatever you paint with them they're gonna feel like each other's company so it, it's a beautiful thing you don't have to struggle so much to create harmonies Veliko Duric was saying one artist said that style is basically everything that artists can't do or or it is hard for them and workarounds around those problems become their style. I think that's a fun idea. Perhaps, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I've never thought about it that way, but perhaps. H.H. H. Milton was saying how do you decide what to paint each day? Uh, we talked about that a little bit in the beginning of the video so just maybe a reflection so that's an invitation to maybe watch from the uh, top but perhaps um, a reflection that was born from from looking at at some of the um, some of love is corinth's uh, paintings and and particularly the um, the comparison between his earlier work and then his latter work and how that evolution uh, came to be so um you know i've i've been thinking quite a lot about my own um process uh of you know just pushing things to to the side that were once very important for me when making a painting and i'm always curious as to where that would lead me or that will lead me so it was just very interesting to to try to think about him a little bit while I'm trying to figure out um, my own mess. Um, Luandino dice, un querido profesor de heurística que tuve decía, lo que te resuena, y eso puede ser arte de otra persona o lo que alguien te dice o algo que viste o incluso una pregunta que te haces. Entonces, con respecto a lo que dijo Dani, a uno le puede resonar una pintura, por ejemplo, pero lo que resuena no es la pintura en sí y eso se refleja en lo que uno después dibuja, pinta, etc. Eso creo yo por lo menos. Sí, bueno, 100%, sí. Lo eh, único, Linda, que no sé es qué es heurística. Si te soy 100% sincero. ¿Heurística? Yo no, no sé. O sea, peco de ser súper ignorante no si es algo. No he sido profesor de heurística nunca. Sí. O sea, que no sé qué es. tanto que pensé, debe ser eucaristía. <risa> pues dice heurística. Heurística es un... <risa> profesor de... de eucaristía, sí. No. Que acá le decimos padre. <risa> dice, es un procedimiento que intenta producir soluciones buenas o aproximadas a un problema de forma rápida, pero que carece de garantías teóricas. Uf, me quedé o sea, un poco todavía no sé, Necesito yo quiero saber, Luandino, ¿dónde tuvo un profesor de heurística? Y un ejemplo de heurística, o sea, un ejemplo de cómo se pone heurística en práctica, si se pone en práctica o pues, no sé. Un ejemplo de heurística, según Lu, sería lo que te resuena, es una enseñanza de heurística. Bueno, no sé, no sé <risa> si esto es como filosofía o, pues, ¿suena filosofía? Dico, dijo, jajaja, ja, ja, Nico, es una rama de la filosofía. Sí, gracias. No, 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 sí, sí qué pena, pero... Sí, no mi hermana lo... estaría acá. Es la heurística, por Dios. ¿La heurística? No, mi amor. Es Laura en América <risa> llegando. Hola, hola a todos. No, la heurística. Eh, no, ¿qué te resuena? Marta Sánchez dice, Nico y Dani, no sé si ya lo han hablado, pero ¿creen que se volverá a repetir un workshop como el que harán en Menorca? Desde uh. que pueda permitírmelo, me a punto de cabeza. Pues hay distintos hmm. workshops. Eh, este año, eh, Nicolás estaba diciendo, va a ir al de Menorca, va a ir al de Roma, y... La Roma. Eh, pues estaba diciendo acá, se estaba presionando, diciendo sí, que iría al de Brasil, eh, en al de Sao Paulo. Sí. Entonces, son distintos todos, eh, pero sí, pero usualmente cada año eh, hay talleres que Nicolás dicta. Sí, pero bueno, seamos... Eh, Por eso digo, son distintos todos, o sea... 
Sí, pero en cuanto a este de en particular, yo no soy quien organiza, pues nosotros no. conocemos a... A, a Carles. A Carles, que es quien, quien ha sido parte de... Quien hacía parte de, de Menorca Pulsar y ahora está como haciendo este proyecto. Uh -huh. mm, pero esta es la primera vez que intenta hacer algo así de ambicioso. Uh -huh. Entonces, o sea, suena muy, muy chévere. Suena, suena que tiene un potencial súper bonito y que no se parece como a nada de lo que pues realmente se ofrece como en, uh -huh. en algún otro lado. Sí, tanto eh, por la idea como por la escala. Sí, es que es, esto es, son muchos artistas juntos en un espacio que es muy particular uh -huh. eh, y, y muchas personas también eh, están yendo al, al mismo tiempo. Entonces, eh, todo eso suena, uf, suena extrañísimo, pero súper chévere. Mm, pero yo no sé, yo creo que con base en cómo salga este, se contemplaría la idea de hacer futuros. Pero pues primero toca hacer este. Esa es la realidad de las cosas. Primero uno tiene que cerciorarse de que este que se está ofreciendo, digamos que de mi parte, o sea, que, que lo que concierne a mí, que es mi grupo, pues yo hacer el mejor trabajo que yo pueda hacer. Eso es como lo único que yo puedo como realmente... Eh, o sea, yo tengo control sobre esas cosas. Entonces... Ojalá todo salga súper bien. Sí, super, y pues super la bien. otra es que, claro, como el taller no es un taller de Nicolás, sino que a Nicolás ah, no, lo no, no. invitaron al sí, taller, estoy... tampoco se sabe. O sea, las siguientes ediciones, eh, pues ellos pueden decidir tener otros artistas. Exacto, exacto. Entonces, sí, sí, yo no, no es como una cosa que uno sepa que va a ser una constante, es... como lo son, digamos, los el, como el curso que nosotros estamos dando en línea, pues lo está dando Nicolás y lo estamos dando virtual, entonces eso sí es nuestro, pero esto otro, como no es nuestro, pues no sé, no, yo creo que por eso también las respuestas son tan vagas, porque uno no... No, pues llegamos a, podemos responder no, hasta un punto, no pero quién, no es, sí, sí, no sí, nos sí, corresponde no y no es, y, tam, y, y pues estamos, por eso, como súper concentrados en, en que lo que nos corresponde, o sea, la parte que nos corresponde, que es como hacer el mejor trabajo que se puede hacer, eh, en términos de nuestro grupo, pues eso, o sea, yo ahí me mato, yo siempre me trabajo durísimo por, por tratar de hacer las cosas súper bien. Eh, y, y no, y pues tengo, creo que la esperanza que tenemos todos los que estamos de alguna manera involucrados y es que todo salga lo mejor posible, o sea, uh -huh. que de verdad sea una experiencia eh, distinta, eh, innovadora, como que y, que, y que pueda llegar a ser una experiencia replicable. Marcelo Peralta. Marcelo. Who's saying you're coming to Sao Paulo? Sao Paulo. That's great. Sign me up. Really. Give Set me a heads up when it's time to get a spot and I'll be there. Septembro. 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 Like che, maybe? Septembro. Septembro. I don't, I don't know why I'm trying to. Yeah. Like teach Danny you when I have Danny no idea. Danny corrected me. But I'm saying, what was it? A go gog? Gog. Gog, you know. The fuel gog. Gog. Gabriel Pozzo. Pozzo. Dice, al de Chattanooga? Y signo de pregunta. Ay, no sé si a Chattanooga puedo hacer algo este año. Me encantaría. Amo Chattanooga. Amo, amo, amo ese taller allá. Um, let's see. Luandino dice... Eh, es el planteo de un problema. La pintura, sí. digamos que sería una búsqueda, por lo que sería como de naturaleza heurística. Tampoco soy tan ñoña, solo que aprendí mucho de esa materia. Fue linda, jaja. No, y fue una materia en qué? En la universidad, en el colegio, en qué, Lu? Quiero saber. M.A. dice, el retrato es espectacular. Muy amable, muy generoso. Eh, Liad was saying, I have never used the Sorn palette. Maybe I will try it sometime. Oh, Liad, you should. Definitely. Mm. Juanes dice, Nicolás, ¿puedes hablar un poco sobre tu gusto por las MMA y de si le encuentras una relación con el arte? Uy, eh, 
No sé, yo creo que tiene que ver más con mi gusto por deportes. O sea, a mí me encanta como la, la competencia en el deporte eh, y me fascina como el ser humano empujándose hacia unos límites como de sacrificio, de trabajo. Eh, uy, no sé, a mí, a mí no sé por qué tengo como tanta fascinación con, con ese tipo de cosas. Y creo que es súper primitivo, ¿no? El, el, eh, el boxeo, todas las artes marciales, o sea, el, el enfrentamiento de un ser humano contra otro. Yo pienso que, no sé, a mí se me hace que eso es, que eso es como... Eso está dentro de nosotros porque no, yo no lo siento violento. Hay mucha gente que piensa que es una, es una estupidez que, 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 otra, que gente se ponga a ver a gente como matándose. O, pero, pero no se dan cuenta de, de lo técnicos que son y de lo mucho que han sacrificado esas personas. Son como cualquier otro deportista. Lo que pasa es que el deporte de ellos pues, implica enfrentarse a otra persona físicamente. Pero, eh, y, pero igual hay normas. O sea, igual hay hay como un, un eh, hay un, un espacio donde, donde pues bueno, pueden o no seguir las normas, pero, pero hay un espacio donde las personas que se están enfrentando decidieron eh, trabajar dentro de esas normas. O sea, a mí eso me, me, me encanta. Toda la vida me ha gustado. Toda la vida los deportes me han fascinado. Y, y no sé, en los que es evidente como ese... Mmm, esa exigencia del cuerpo del ser humano siempre me... Uf, ese tipo de cosas como que me, me, me encantan. No, no sé si, si entendería que es algo... No sé, no sé, no sé si, si lo vería como algo... Es que ni siquiera cuestiono si es algo congruente con las artes, con la pintura o... No sé, no... no como que nunca he pensado que esa es como una... O sea, que tendría que serlo, digámoslo así, que tendría que serlo como para que yo pudiera encontrar paralelos. Yo creo que no tiene que serlo, es lo, lo mismo que el, el, el fútbol. O sea, no, no, no creo que ese, eh, ese tenga que ser un prerequisito para que yo lo, lo disfrute. Incluso hay muchísimos artistas que, que son súper críticos del fútbol, súper, súper críticos de de lo que es el fútbol como, como institución, como el fútbol como empresa, el fútbol como negocio, que es súper corrupto hay veces. Entonces, es curioso uno encontrar que la gente, a los artistas, como que les guste un, un, un tipo de deporte popular. Sí, no mucho. Es, es, bien, es bien extraño, mm. es bien, bien extraño, pero... Eh, a mí me fascina, no sé. A mí también. Es que sí, con Dani lo disfrutamos. O sea, dentro de las cosas que tenemos en común es que, es que disfrutamos muchísimo como, como esa parte también. Eh, nosotros nos podemos ver una pelea de boxeo o nos podemos ver un partido de fútbol. Sí. Y, y no sé, se nos hace como... Pues no nos sé, gusta, es súper bonito, sí. Mucho, sí. Es súper es bonito ver... O sea, para mí no hay nada más, más lindo que ver un ser humano como sobresaliendo en algo que ha tenido que levantarse todas las mañanas, entrenar, sacrificar, salir con los amigos, sacrificar familia, relaciones personales, y que uno diría como, uy, no, pero, pero qué bobada. Y hay gente que dice, cuando, cuando critican mucho los deportes, dicen, ay, pero es un sol, solo es un juego, pero nunca han visto la vida de esas personas, como mm. cómo ese juego le dio razón de ser a esas personas, les, sí. le dio razón de vivir a esas personas. Entonces, eh, hay veces cuando la gente es muy crítica, como que no, yo creo que nunca ha visto la vida de un deportista, como que nunca se ha dado cuenta lo que implica para un deportista y más allá de eso, ser de los mejores en, en algo, eso es fascinante. O sea. Pero sí, sí, pero también yo diría, o sea, a ti y a mí nos encanta, o sea, la emoción que uno siente al jugar fútbol. Sí, no. Ver fútbol y jugar fútbol es como... No sé, es increíble. Sí. Um, Gil was saying, Oh my God, I'm going to start saving for that. Sao Paulo, here we go. <risa> <risa> Luandino dice, Sí, la universidad, estoy terminando la licenciatura en artes visuales. Ah, qué bonito. Ah, bueno. Muy chévere. Uh, Saint... Gales 
Dice, exposición de formatos pequeños y notas de color de Sorolla en Barcelona. Ok. Y signos de admiración. Qué regalo de la vida es Sorolla. Sí. Eh, yo te dije, fue mi... Oh, es que es un sitio fue, mágico. Sí, la casa de él uh -huh. fue mi museo favorito. Fue mi experiencia de museo favorito. No, es que... Bueno, es, uy, es que es difícil, pero es que, pff, no sé, me... Es que no se me, parece a ningún otro no, sitio en no. la Tierra, yo creo. No, y también lo que hablábamos de como la proximidad que uno siente que puede tener con la obra. Sí. Como la familiaridad que uno puede tener con la obra es muy distinta a la que uno tiene en, un museo. en el Reina Sofía. O en el Prado, sí, o en el o Prado. En, sí, o sea, en cualquier otra, entonces... Eh, Ni was saying, hi Nicolás, how are you? Very good, thank you. Has it ever happened to you as an artist to have anxiety about taking too long on a painting that other artists would have done much faster or oh, better? No, What never. advice? No, never. No, because if you're caught in that place, it means that your mind is where it's not supposed to be. And I try to never put my mind where it's not supposed to be. Because so, also, I would say, Ni, that speed does not mean anything. Nothing. I mean, speed isn't equal quality in painting. No. So I would have painted... years. Yeah. I would have painted the uh, Gran Via way faster than Antonio Lopez. And that would mean that my painting, in that particular case of, of a painting, that my painting would have been so much worse than what he was able to do. So, no, 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 I never think of those things, never. And why would you waste a moment? I'm, I'm not telling you why would you waste. Why would one waste a moment, like a moment, um, in thinking that somebody else could do whatever you're doing better? Like, what, what does that do? Who cares? And also, it's, it's not a race, which is great, because you can take the time you need to. That's why when someone was talking about the live stream of me painting, I said it would be a 24-hour live stream. Yeah. And it was a joke, but it's true because I'm a slow painter. And that's how I am. And I think that that doesn't say anything good or bad about no, it just, my painting. It just yeah. says that I'm a slow painter. Yeah, or no, slower than other painters. Yeah, but and that's, you that know, means who, nothing, who so. Like I said... um. You know, that painting that Antonio Lopez did, it was years making that painting. So take Chile out. I don't think I've ever yeah. painted anything that took years to paint. So I don't have the patience to paint, you know, anything that would take years to paint. But that kind of means that I just, I just, I'm not capable of painting that painting that he so masterfully did. But when I'm doing my painting, no, I don't think about anyone else, to be honest. I mean, well... My mind is always inundated by other artists, like, you know, prior artists that came before me, prior artists, in, in, in terms of, like, influence and, and, you know, but good things, not, not things that would become obstacles, but actually good things. So things that could empower me, things that could show me the way if I get lost during a painting, stuff like that, but never feeling like, oh, I'm... I'm not supposed to be painting this because if, you know, if I painted, I'm pretty sure that this other person could have done a far better job at this. Like, what, what's that going to do? Who, you know, that, that's not helping me in any way thinking like that. So, um, so I think I'm done, Daniel Ira. Oh, you are? Yeah, I think so. Chili, uh, Chili marked the end of the, timing. yeah, she marked the end of the painting, I feel. Um. And the reason is, uh, like, I just, there, I, there's so many things that I like. I'm trying to see if I have, I need a brush to do, like, one stupid little stroke. Um, but, um, no, I was saying that I, there's, there's things that I know that if I overwork, I'll ruin. Mm -hmm. So I just want to stop while I am sort of ahead. I don't know if people can listen to... To the licking? Uh, yeah. Chili's ASMR. Lickopalypse. Oh, no. My, my mouth, Chili. 
That's in private, Chili. <laughs> that we do in private. Let's see. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, I just needed like a tighter shape for that and like a more irregular shape for that, I feel. And let me do one something else right next to it. And I think we're done. Yeah, I just needed to clean. It feels like nothing, but to me, those things mean a lot. So uh, to clean those little shapes up. Um, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Uh, I like it. Love the ears. Uh, there's a hound-like quality to, to the uh, portrait. Kind of sad, I feel. There's a, a bit of a sadness to it also that I really, really like. Um, I... I, I Really enjoyed the the sort of uh, bronzy, uh, earthy red quality of that against some of the ochre, um, greenish ochre that is up in the forehead, um, which can make it very. I think this painting could be very useful for for the exercise that we're doing at the uh, course. So maybe I'll use it for the for the one of the course and uh, the one paint the other painting that I was thinking of painting. I'll I'll paint some. I'll paint differently, but. Um, no, I'm very happy. I think it's, uh, I think it's very nice. I think it's very, very nice. I like it. Um, and it gave me the chance to, uh, think about Corinth, um, during this time. So grateful for that also. Um, very abstract up here. There's, there's like a ton of colors kind of blending in together. I was, I'm always a sucker for trying to overdevelop, like, let's say a nose. I'm always hyper attracted to noses because they have like so much structure so i had to like stop and tell myself to to not do it um um but and it's very it's very brushy very kind of scratchy which i really really like in 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 many instances it just feels like these stabs of color uh which i i kind of like um i actually really like and then the, I think a lot of the sharpness that I was going for in like all these different shapes, it was necessary because I really wanted to push those shape, the shapes of those ears and make them pointy. And, and so it can't just be a regular portrait and then pointy ears because then it'll look ridiculous. You kind of have to then sprinkle, find, find ways to sprinkle that over the rest of the painting so that it makes sense. Um, so there's a lot of asymmetry to it that I obviously always, always enjoy. I don't know. There's very, um, chance there's very, you know, there's a ton of things that happened by, by chance that I kind of left behind that I really like that if I could give it a second thought, I would probably do different though. I like when I like that feeling that when I see something and I say, maybe I should leave it. And my immediate thought after that is to say, well, if I had more time, I'm almost positive that I know myself so much that I think I know where I would take this painting if I don't, like, if I decided to, to, um, to keep working, if I decided not to, you know, leave it untouched, but, but to say, let's go to the place that it's familiar to me. So I always kind of envision what I would do if I didn't stop, because that is very close to me. That I've seen myself do a million times. But it's so cool to tell myself, let's stop here because this is a place that you don't know. This is like a tiny little instance that maybe you've never done. And it could be nothing. It could be, a, it could be like this little um, highlight of the eye that goes up into the lid and actually almost like into the brow like that's so careless but i love it it could be these two little lines that are just i don't know they're just kind of like echoing that direction of the ear i wanted so much to paint over these two lines and like clean it up with the um with the background and and have that be just like a a very simple ear shape like a triangular ear shape 
But I left those and I left this little bit of like drawing, strange drawing that is also here. I mean, it's, uh, it's so open up here and down here and then kind of scratchy in the middle. Um, there's so many things like that throughout the painting that it, it's always like, that's why I feel every single painting becomes an opportunity to mm -hmm. do something that you haven't done. And it doesn't mean that you have to improvise to try and do something ridiculous. Like, oh, I've never painted with, you know, br holding my brush with my thumb and pinky. Let's see what that feels like. It's not about, you know, trying to be um, innovative for the sake of being innovative. It, it, that doesn't do anything. It doesn't matter. But it's more of like the little things that are that are throughout the painting that give you like tiny little experiences that you've never gone through. And um, it's almost like a, the, the construction of a painting is just full of those opportunities. And it's always a matter of you choosing to play with them, to leave them or not. And many times we're very serious and we'll say like, okay, no, this is too much. This is ridiculous. That's not how I paint. Like I need to grow up and just make a serious painting. And of course I'm not going to do that. And then you, you know, you maybe um, brush like a bunch of color on top of whatever you did, or you further develop a form, um, or you or you start to paint more in a more disciplined way. Um, but you know, it's always a decision, always, always a decision. And um, I've noticed that for me, part of my development as as you know, or or part of the reasons that or one of the reasons, and maybe one of the more powerful reasons that have, has taken me to the place where I am right now, which I'm very comfortable, but kind of excited about not knowing what to do with painting, um, is the fact that I, I'm, every day I'm training myself to, to recognize those moments and to more often, more often than not say, let me keep it. Let me see what happens if I keep this. Let me see what happens if I do this instead of the thing that I was going to do. Like, what is the result? Like, what happens if I do? And not only let me leave it, but then look, see it as you're painting. Like, you, you have to observe it while you're painting. And then you have to, as a painter, say, how do I make this work? Like, a painting is something that has to be solved. So every single time, I, I kind of have to tell myself, fine, you took a chance and you did this weird thing. How do you make it work? Like, how does that in the end, you know, come together as a painting that, that kind of makes sense um, in an integral way? Um, and that's what I think if I had to, in a very kind of abstract way, define why painting is exciting to me, it's those little kind of micro moments of execution in a painting that always pose me that question. It's like, oh, we had never done this. Do you want to go further? Like, do you want to go alongside this path? Or do you want to go back to something that feels a little safer? And um, yeah, my answer, my answer now is like, hell yeah, let's go. Let's try and see what happens. Sometimes it works. Sometimes, you know, it's um, produces things that I'm like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, I'm happy with this. And other times it's like, oh, that made me struggle. Like I thought I had the necessary experience to tackle something like that, but no, that totally made me struggle. Um, and in both cases, it's amazing. You know, whatever, whatever the case may be, if it's, if it's just an opportunity to struggle or if it's an opportunity to learn because you found that those decisions proved to be successful in the sense that they constructed, you know, a painting that could communicate, you know, fiercely what you wanted to say. Both of those are, are, are you know, invaluable to me. Um, so, um, yeah, I think today was cool. It's always fun to take chances, uh, you know, in terms of the shapes that you decide to um, lay out and to see... They, it's almost like throwing, you know, you know, those uh, those witches that would throw bones and stuff and would tell you your future. I oh, I sometimes feel that way. It's like I throw every like throw these things up in the air and they land and then you kind of try to make sense of them and, and just push them together to try to, you know, um, you know, order them in a way that eventually 
they feel like they're about to fall apart. It's a very it's a very weak scaffolding, I feel. But um but it's like, okay, this is sturdy enough to try to do something with it. And uh and that yeah, that's what I try to do with, with most of my paintings. At least most of the ones that I that in the end I'm like, okay, well, that's something happened there. I have no idea how to parse it. Like I don't know how to learn from it at this moment, but you know, I'm pretty sure that some of the answers will reveal to me if I just keep at it and keep at it and keep painting. So, and just pay attention. So, so that was it, Daniel Lira. Perfect. I think we're good. Yeah. yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah, it was fun. And, a lot um, of fun. yeah, I would just want to add for yeah. people that maybe are new or worse. If they are new, but they if they're not new, but they haven't subscribed. Oh, the I worst would, people in the world! <laughs> oh my god, I look would, at my palette! What a mess! No, I like it. Jesus Christ! No, and I'm I teaching mean, a course on color. Could you imagine? Like, yes, follow follow these easy steps for a uh, you know uh, digestible palette. Well, but you don't have to use your palette oh, in a specific no. order. The definition of, of do be. as I say, not as I do. Oof, so oof. no, as I was saying. Uh, thank you everyone that's thank here you. and uh, we would love if you would uh, consider subscribing yes. so you can join us for future live streams yes we do live streams from uh, almost so let's say almost every single day of the week we're yeah. here uh, we don't have a set hour so the best way to know when we're here is by ringing the bell yes. when you subscribe not our apartment door no. No, the actual bell. I don't know why I said that. Uh, we do have a web page. It's called mm -hmm. ourpaintedlives.com. And it is the place where we sell all the things we do. Mm -hmm. And we do it because that's our way of, our form of income. We yeah. We do not um, ask for any paywalls for the video. So that's how we keep the videos coming. Uh, we also have Instagram. It is... Yes uh down there so you can check it out and that's it we were happy to be here with you and we'll see you tomorrow